Hey, y'all. How are you doing today? Happy, uh, happy Friday. Uh, so yesterday I made a post in the community section of my YouTube channel. I actually made a couple posts, but one of the posts was about a bunch of evidence that's going to be dumped um, about the Ruby, Frankie, Jody Hildebrand case. And it was dumped all this morning. And it's a lot to sift through. It's a lot to go through. I still can't really download it because I think a lot of people are on the website right now. It's getting flooded. The website keeps crashing. But, you know, we have people that are uploading the content um, along the way. So uh, we have a couple shout outs, you know, Long Crime, Court TV and all that stuff and like KU TV. Actually, I don't know if Court TV has been doing any of it. I know it's like Long Crime and KUTV. But uh, we got some police interrogations. We got some body cam footages. We got some diary journal entries, which is wild to me because imagine documenting all the horrible things that you did to the kids. Then police use that as evidence because initially I was wondering, um, how did they get so much information about what happened to the kids? I thought maybe at some point when the kids were comfortable, when they were okay, they decided to close, they decided to disclose the police what happened to them. But no, 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 no. The women were keeping journal entries about everything they were doing to the kids. Wild, crazy. Um, and then also we have jailhouse calls, which to me are very infuriating because I don't know. I feel like jailhouse calls, they know it's recorded. They should know because usually when you're on the jailhouse calls, I think there's like a loop, like every couple of minutes, it will tell you like, oh, this call is recorded, blah, 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 you know. But um, in the jailhouse calls that I listen to, and I don't listen to some of them so far, but I feel like they reveal how people are. I don't know. It's like it's like it's recorded, you know, you would think they would be on their best behavior, but I feel like they reveal a lot and they're I don't know. They piss me off. I was listening to some of the jailhouse calls and some of them are just like like between Kevin Frankie, between Ruby Frankie. Now, because before I was giving Kevin Frankie a lot of benefit of the doubt, um, it's not like right now I believe that he was involved in the abuse with Jody Hildebrand and Ruby Frankie, but I was giving him benefit of the doubt, like, oh, maybe he completely turned against, you know, Ruby. But like, I don't know, when I'm listening to the calls, it seems like he's still sweet on her. And he's like, I love you. I support you. And I'm like, this is after you found out what happened to your kids. This is how you feel. Like, I don't know. Oh, it's annoying. But yeah, we have a lot of uh, stuff to go through and I'm not going to post any of the graphic photos on here, but I will link them in my discord. As we talk about them, I'll look at my discord because I do think it's important for you guys to see them if you want to, because you get to see the extent of like how severe it was, these injuries. Um, remember the neighbor that called 911? This is what he had to see when he called 911 in, like initially, right? The man was like breaking down on the phone call. Like he saw how how horrible the conditions were. And so I'm not gonna put it on my, on my stream, but um, I'll link the, uh, the articles because there's articles out there that already posted it. We'll link the articles in the Discord if you guys wanna take a look at it. Um, but like you can't see the injuries, of course, because they're covered in duct tape, saran wrap, but you can still see a bit of it. Taxi, thank you so much for the 249. I appreciate you. Guys, thanks for popping in. Um, but I do wanna say this though. If you guys had a bad week, I would say maybe skip the stream, maybe come back in a couple of days. Um, if you guys are looking to go into the weekend with like really good vibes, maybe you have some vacation planned or something like that, maybe come back in a couple of days because uh, some of the stuff that we're going to go over, we're going to look at, we're going to listen to, um, we're going to read, um, it's, I don't know, it's going to piss you off, honestly, because I was already pissed off and I haven't even looked at everything yet. I've already looked at bits and pieces here and there and I'm just like... I don't know. Inside of me, I'm just, it's just boiling. You heard a little bit of Kevin's interviews, wild, ready to dive in, just saw Ruby's interrogation footage. Yeah, so we don't really get much from interrogation footages with Jody, with Ruby. Um, they lured up pretty quickly, so we're not going to get like the eight hours, you know, with, um, what's her face? What's the lady that, uh, what's her name again? Wendy Adelson. Wendy Adelson sitting there for eight hours, spilling her guts and all these theories about her family's being involved. We're not going to get any of that because... Ruby, she sat there quietly, very stoically, asked us for a lawyer. And then Jody, well, by the time that the police already came to her door, she already had her attorney on the phone, which I thought was wild because if you didn't think you were doing anything wrong, if you don't think you were hurting the kids, if you thought this was all therapeutic, if you thought it was all like, you know, it was all fine, why, why would you be on the police? Why would you be on the phone with your lawyer um, before police even arrived? She, was on, she called her attorney immediately, I guess, after she realized one of the children went missing. It's probably because at that point, she was like, oh, shit, like, they're going to they're gonna expose me. I don't know. It's a, it's a lot to go through, but um, I don't know. The, the journal entries, I can't believe they documented everything. It's wild. 
But hi, Irene. Unicorn. Yeah, Unicorn was the first one here. I can see, see. I see you. Some of you guys have your Discord notifications. Let's go. Um, yeah, if you guys have any, feel free to join the Discord. I feel like the notifications always go through. Sometimes with YouTube, the notifications are like iffy. But Discord, you always get the notifications. So, um, yeah, feel free to join us on Discord. We do have a true crime section. Uh, I'll just link it right here. Uh, we ha There's an app for it. And then there's also like a browser version. I've never used the... Well, not the browser version, but like if you have a computer, there's like the Discord program you can download. So I actually never used the browser version, but I'm assuming it should work okay. Not janky. All right, y'all. So, um, I don't know. I mean, what have you guys seen so far? Because they dumped everything about like 6 a.m. And there's been body cam footages. There's been some police interrogations. Um, I haven't really listened to the jailhouse calls yet. I've only listened to like maybe like two. But that's about it. And then I took a little like shout out to Rain for linking the the the, the fucking journal entries. This is the journal entry. I think it's Ruby Frankie's, and I think it's her documenting everything her and Jody did, which is so crazy to me. Um, maybe I will start with that because I don't know. I don't, I'm like I'm trying to think. Where should, where should we start? Where do we even start with all of this? So the video is loading right now. But how are you guys doing today? How's it going? Hello, hello. I feel like there's a lot of cases right now that are just, I don't know, some really tough cases. The, the Soto one, really tough as well. There was a police uh, update yesterday, a little press conference. Still waiting for the medical examiner report. Wait, why is this loading? Is my internet good? <laughs> hello, Tim. How are you doing today? Hi, yes, Julie. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Kevin Frankie. <clears throat> well, it seems like my videos are loading right now. I don't know. I feel like YouTube is, uh, let's do normal. Okay, I guess let's start with the, do we want to do journal entries? Do we want to do Ruby Frankie, Jody Hildebrandt, get hauled off to jail? So like, there are, I think I want to watch like the original version and then we could probably like skim through them if it's just like nothing much going on. But Law and Crime, they uploaded like a bunch of stuff. Uh, and I like Law and Crime because they will upload like larger, you know, like not just like two, two second, like or two minute sec sections of it. They'll actually upload like, you know, 45 an hour long ones, which I really like. Um, let's start off with. This is the one that we saw. Kevin Frankie. I guess we can start with Kevin Frankie. Let's do Kevin Frankie. I know. It's, I feel like the ones lately are all against, like, children. Like, oh, there's just so many of them against children. But hi, Lauren. How are you doing today? How's it going? I don't know. With the Soto case, it's very, very sad. But I hope that, I don't know. I hope people will be more careful when you're selecting your new partner, right? Let's say you and your ex are divorced. If you're selecting a new partner, make sure the partner that you choose, make sure they're going to be safe around your kids. Just make sure you're extra careful, right? Or maybe don't bring them around your kids until you've really known them. But there's this one case. Oh, my God. It's so annoying. I was reading about it yesterday about um, the man was convicted of murder. The woman, she took a plea deal and she, you know, she testified against the husband. Uh, sorry, her, her new boyfriend. But she moved in with her boyfriend for three weeks. And during those first three weeks, her boyfriend was like abusing her, her daughter, like five-year-old daughter doing like crazy, crazy things. Like she was telling the police crazy stuff. And I'm like, how could you sit there and allow this to happen? It was wild. It was like thumbtacks. And it was like, I don't know. It's just like, it's just crazy shit. And I was like, how do you sit there thinking this is fucking okay? I don't know. So wild. Kevin shocked me after the first few minutes. All right. We'll start with the Kevin one then. Let's start with Kevin and then we'll... Actually, let's do the Ruby Frankie one. Yeah, let's start with Ruby. All right, this is Ruby getting... She's, like, sitting there <laughs> with her arms crossed. Y'all see her? Okay, yeah, no, go ahead. Okay. Then is there a restroom right here? Or? I don't know where it's at. Where do we need to use this? Okay. Yeah, there is one in there. Thank you, sir. Okay. I mean, LT. Do I need to boost the audio or are we good here? Yeah, the vault. Mm -hmm. I think before we go to the vault, I want to read the 
the journal entries first. Now, I didn't watch Eight Passengers. I don't know if she just has resting annoyed face. But she just looks very annoyed. Like, all of this is just an inconvenience to her. I don't know. Those are connected to it. Oh, hi, Kay. How are you doing today? How's it going? Hey, Joseph. So is this her apartment that she's staying at? Because I know she has the home, which is about, what, four hours away from Jody's home. Is this like an apartment that she rented to be nearby Jody by any chance? She has strong Karen energy to me in general. <laughs> she does. She sure does. Is it a locker or is that the locker? Yeah, turn down there. You good? Yeah. Okay. I watched the video of her crying and ranting and raving after she talked to her children's um, principal. There was like some dance they were going to do and she was like really upset about the music or something like that. And she was like just she was just like, you know, ranting in the car. Hi, Mentats. How are you doing today? Hello. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said something. He was yelling something to him. I apologize. This is Jody's house? This looks like an apartment. I don't think it's Jody's house. How are you? All right, well, it feels good. Is it like, oh, wait, does Jody have like a guest house or something like that? So, hey, Ruby, at this time, I know we have to say that you're already detained, but I'm going to be taking you back to the police department. Okay, so I'm going to be pop up. Because the view looks very similar, but I wasn't sure. Put on one of our hey, Chomp. Yeah, you want to... Okay, just place your hand on your back for me. Perfect. Oh, my God. I heard about that. She had some sort of Airbnb. Apparently, she told police officers when they were going there searching her house that her Airbnb guests were upset by the police being there or something like that. <laughs> and then right now, I can put a finger in each of these, okay? And I'm just going to double off this so they don't tighten up on you on the way out there. Where's your car? It's out there. From, yeah. From about by the command. Um, you don't have anything on you that I should know about, correct? Any weapons, anything that we're going to find. Before we put you in a police vehicle, we need to search your person to make sure you don't have anything on you. Is there anything you have on you? Okay. I'm going to search you before we put you in his car. Like, I get wanting to remain silent, but you you can talk to the police officers about small stuff like that. Like, no, I'm fine. No, I'm good. But she's like, we'll see her in the police interrogation. She just sits there like, like a deer in fucking headlights. That's just protocol. So I'm just going to have you step right over here and then just widen your legs, widen your stance. Yep. Perfect. Are you wearing a bra? Okay. I'm just going to go like this through and make sure you don't have anything. You said you're not wearing a bra? Okay. Is that just like a tank top under here? Okay. Just gonna lift up your hair. Okay. Alright, you're just gonna walk with Officer Hines. No bra, And then, hey, Hines. Is you want me this way or that way? Yeah. Okay. And then if you wanna go down the downstairs yeah. into the interview room down. It, it looks fucking beautiful. So my understanding was that Jody came home first and then probably noticed that Russell was missing because I remember that in the 911 call, the person who called was like really concerned. He's like, oh shit, like Jody's home now, Jody's home now. He probably realized that he's not, you know, he's not there. So I imagine it was probably Jody that arrived at the house first and then maybe at some point she contacted Ruby and then Ruby also arrived at the house. And then at some point, Ruby must have called Kevin and told him, like, hey, like, you know, uh, I need you to come and pick up the kids at the police station. Something happened. Downstairs. Sounds good. Thank you going you. down or I'm going down? You're going down. I'll come get the for I appreciate it. I was going to ask you to come turn my car off, but I'm leaving now. So we're good. Yeah. It's still on. Hi, Queen. How are you doing today? Thanks. Yeah. 
Uh... No, not clickbait. Uh, they dumped a bunch of evidence in the Hildebrand and Frankie case. Uh, body cam footages, police, you know, footages, phone calls, stuff like that. We're just okay. gonna look at it right now. Hey, uh, hold on. Well, mm -hmm. it was all oh. dumped in like like six oh. hours ago. If you want to ask, uh, I, I still can't get access to the website. We down it's there? still crashing for me. I think so many people are trying to access it. Look at how quiet this area is. Look at how far away the houses are from each other. I wonder how many other kids Jody brought back to her house to discipline them or therapize them, as she was saying. Yeah, Captain. Uh, he told me, she told me to transfer it down and she'll meet me okay, here. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Ruby, what's your last name? Just so I could tell them I'm transferring. Okay. Control to 13. Wait, did she respond? I don't think she did, did she? She doesn't want to talk to them at I'll all. I'll transfer Ruby to number 12. I'll give you my beginning here in a minute. It looks like a perfect place to start a cult. I'll come up and I'll come back and grab it after they get back here. You guys got it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, brown hammer. I thought it was pink. All right. Thanks, sir. Bye. Right, <laughs> Julie. And not only that, they asked her like, "Hey, you want some water? You need to use the bathroom?" And she's like. I'm like, you can answer those. <laughs> okay, come on up, please. We'll go that way, close that door. What's that? Downstairs in the interview room. So I could have gone that way, but I appreciate opening the door. Yes, um, I did. Uh, a huge shock. Catherine, Princess of Wales, announced uh, she was getting cancer treatment, which is so crazy because remember, the internet was going after the fucking royal family, which I don't really care about the royal family, but all the conspiracy theories that came out about it. And they were like, there was a video that came out. They're trying to compare the heights of Catherine versus Prince William. And they're like, that's not her chin. That's not her face. She looks way younger. That's a different person. That's a doppelganger. And I'm like, oh my God, like it was so freaking wild. And now I feel like the reason why she's out here telling everyone that she had to get cancer treatment was because the internet was going crazy with all these conspiracy theories. Um, I feel so bad for her. So yeah, she's getting cancer treatment right now. Look at these guys right here. Yes, I heard about that. People were trying to hack and get her medical records. I heard about that, Caitlin. Um, I, I saw that like four people were being investigated, but weren't those four people were the people that working was working at the hospital? This next one right right here. Right here. And we'll go ahead and make everyone those tests right here. Go to the other room. This way, yeah. Yeah, and one of them was like, oh my god, she looks so skinny. That's not her. Look how skinny she looks. I'm like, listen, she went to surgery. She had abdominal stuff, like maybe she wasn't digesting food properly maybe she was absorbing food properly like we don't we don't know right like i don't know it was so what i felt really bad for her 
Um, I wonder if she, the, her kids knew right away or if it was one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I have to tell my kids now because, you know, the public and all that stuff. Like, I don't know. I felt so bad for her. I still do. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Arms crossed, looks pissed. Yeah, she looks kind of pissed here. Okay, she'll be here shortly, okay? Maybe it's cold there. Maybe that's why she's crossing her arms. What's that? You need to hold on in my office. Wait, sorry. Let me look at the timestamps really quick. So this is at like five. What time did they get her? And this is like four. Okay. Do, do you guys know what time the 911 call was? Because I think they had her and Jody sit around for a couple of hours while they went in and searched the house to make sure um, they can locate the other children. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, you want your cuff back? She is definitely not a talk. She not? Not anyone. Even if I ask her a name okay. or just like, then you ask about things, she looks at me and goes, I know. Tell the other ones. What's that? Tell the other ones. Really? Yeah, I'm very curious. I'm gonna have you come sit on this side for me. Thank you. Is this your water? I'm gonna. It's yours if you want it. We'll say that a couple of hours. We also have snacks if you need anything to eat. So I know I introduced myself to you earlier, but my name is Detective Bates, and this is Sergeant Tobler. We're just here to talk to you about kind of a few things involving your kids. So first, are you, do you live down here or? Or do you live up north? She looks so creepy. I don't know, maybe it's the way she blinks or something like. Do you want to talk to me about where you live or? How many kids do you have? So we just spoke with your husband and he said you guys have six kids. Are those all together? Are those all your kids? I can wait all day. So it's up to you if you want to talk to us about what's going on. Would you feel more comfortable talking to one of us? Maybe you want me to, I can step out if you want. Or if you feel more comfortable talking to him, I can step out. I'll wait till I have a lawyer. Okay. So you don't want to talk to us at all? Well, I mean, imagine being the law enforcement in that room with her i'd be like do you want to answer that are you you don't want to talk to us about anything so yeah this, this is <laughs> And remember, these people claim that they believe they weren't doing anything wrong. I feel like at this point, they knew it was wrong. And that's why they're shutting the fuck up and not saying anything. And they're luring up. This is just your chance to tell us we're just trying to get your side of the story. I do wonder, though, if um, she ever came back with her lawyer and talked to law enforcement. Or if at that point, it was already just direct with like the state. Um. So it's your chance to do that, but it's up to you. We're just gonna talk. And I mean, I'm not asking any criminal questions. If you don't want to talk to us, just let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll be done. No, you should always have an attorney. Guys, if you guys ever get arrested and they want to talk to you, get a fucking attorney, okay? If your kids get arrested, get a fucking attorney. I've already told you. Uh, you want a lawyer? Okay. Yes. Okay. Easy 
you. Thank you. Is there anything else I can get for you when you pack? I got the water, do you need a bathroom break or anything like that? No? <laughs> like, you, you can answer yes or no to those questions. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Jody, on the other hand, when police showed up at her door, it was it was kind of a shit show. She was already on the phone with her attorney. Um, she was yelling and screaming at them. You don't have a search warrant. You don't have a search warrant. They ran in. They went in the house, tried to find the other kid. And um, she was like in a panic. Okay, she was like she was like huffing and puffing a little bit. So this is Jody Hildebrandt when they knock on her door. So at this point, nine hundred one call. Um, oh, okay, we have timestamps right there. Nice nine hundred one call. Uh, one of the children has already been. Um, I guess probably looked at by paramedics. They probably saw how severe the conditions were and they probably told law enforcement that, Hey, like, yeah, I have another sister back at the house. So that's the reason why they're coming in, busting through the door, trying to locate the other uh, child. Jody, can you just step uh, out? I have, I have by turn. That's great. Step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out step of the house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're just going to step out. Is there anybody else home? Wait a minute. How do you come to my house? Right there. Who can they go into my house? So have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. I'll explain everything after. Hold have there. a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant, sir? Control 12 x 11. Can you hold the air? We're searching the house. I can tell you what's in the house. Oh, okay. Just have a seat right there for <laughs> I can tell you what's in the house. Bitch, why would we believe you? For me. Do you have a search warrant? We'll explain it after this. <laughs> you can't just come into my house without a search warrant. We'll explain everything after this, ma'am. <sighs> I hear that sigh. <laughs> okay. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're here. So we'll explain after everything's done, after we... Clear the house and make sure everything's fine. In but there. why are you coming into my house without a we'll search warrant? We'll explain it after this. But that doesn't make sense. Jody, you know why. You know why. There's a reason why you're on the phone with the attorney, okay? The moment you found out one of the children was missing. You know why? Don't be playing dumb now. You come into my house and do what you want, and then you tell me you don't have a no, warrant? No, we'll explain why we did. But don't you have to have a warrant? Not at this moment, we don't. We're here on exigent circumstances. And I'll explain it after this, after my sergeant and the officer are done clearing the house. So this is the day where one of the children uh, escaped the house. Had duct tape on, I think, wrists, um, I think uh, ankles as well, along with some weird saran wrap. Um, there was like injuries underneath it. The other child, um, who is, I don't know if she's the youngest, maybe the youngest daughter, uh, the younger child, is still in the house. Now, we don't know why. Was it whether Jody? It was probably Jody. Jo Jody probably told her to go hide in the closet because when they're searching the house at this point, they find her in the closet. At this point, though, they thought she was like a boy because her hair was completely shaved off. They were like, oh, where's your, where, where's your sister? Is your sister here? And then they realize that she is the sister. They, they shave the girl's head off to be cruel. It's in, it's in the journal entries as well. We'll take a look at it. She had one of the child in her house at this point. One already escaped, and then one was still hiding in there. I just looked at a word up. Ex exigent. I've never heard of that word before. Exigent. Pressing or demanding. The exigent demands of the music took a toll on her voice. Exigent. Exigent. Okay. We learned a new word. Is there anybody else in the house? Yes. Two kids? There's a little girl. Just one? She's right over here. Okay. How old is she? She'll be 10 next week. Okay. And she's on this side? Mm-hmm. I have Airbnb guests over there. Probably scared me to death. Okay. No one gives a fuck about your Airbnb guests, okay? And also, who's the Airbnb guest? Was it, was it Ruby? Is Ruby the Airbnb guest?
And they're on this side of the house then? They're right over there. She's over here. Can you get through the house that way? Yes, they just okay. have to go right there. There's no other kids besides her? No. What's her name? Shit, if I was the Airbnb guys, I'd be scared of her, man. I'm like, okay, hold on a second. I'm I'm staying at this person's place. What has she been up to? Yeah, a lot of bad ones lately, lemon baked. A lot of bad ones lately. Should be off to, where are you at? Should be off to the left right in there. To the main bedroom? It's right there. How do you get there from the inside? Walk around the corner. There's a little hall. And just the first. It's just around the corner, the down the hall. Second door to the right. I can't wait to listen to the jailhouse calls when they start turning on each other. I think she took the plea deal first, and that might have pissed off Ruby Frankie. Like I said, I haven't listened to the entirety of it. I've just been popping out here and there. Formal? This is like a... No, nah, it's not formal. I'm wearing a, like a sweater. Sweater thing. Yes, the jailhouse calls, I think they reveal so much, which is wild because they know it's recorded, but they still acting like it ain't. They act like it's a private phone call. Well, I guess while we wait for this, she's just standing there. Um, so this is the website right here, Washington County, Utah. They release all the evidence, uh, all the stuff regarding this uh, case. So this page keeps crashing for me though. I tried downloading it, but I can't. I didn't wake up early enough. <laughs> I woke up a little, a little late today. Yeah, which is wild because like now we've already seen the sentencing. We saw what they said oh, during sentencing. But now we're going to hear what was going on behind the scenes, how the women reacted when they were arrested during interrogation. Mm. It's like there's, looks like there's two. There's two. There's two. There's two. There's two. Looks like two. There's, there's only one. Oh, I watched Mama Dearest. Who's this at the door, then? Mommy Dearest? It's so sad. Oh, that's, um, never mind. Sorry, that was one of the officers. I thought it was two. Would love to know how they interact with the other women inmates. You all listen to the jailhouse calls, but Ruby Frankie was like, I have so I have so much compassion for these cons. I have so much compassion for myself. <laughs> she was talking to Kevin Frankie. I'm like, did those other women also abuse their kids as well? Is that why you have compassion for them? Yeah, I think they just stand around for the for a bit. Um, any communication, because I think she's with her, she's on the phone with her attorney right now, perhaps. Um, any of that communication is, they're obviously going to probably mute it, I think. Just one. Just one. Sorry. Ruby's so incredibly phony. <sighs> I try giving her benefit of the doubt, but I'm starting to think I was being too nice. Yeah, they're just searching around the house at this point. I 
I mean, honestly, she looks way more upset than Ruby Frankie. Ruby just looks... I don't even know how to describe it. At sometimes it's like emotionless. At sometimes it was annoyed. At sometimes it was angry. At sometimes it was just like an inconvenience to her. She looks genuinely distressed. Sometimes smug. LT. The she's on the phone with her attorney. Okay. He's asking what the reasons why we're here. Because mm -hmm. when I pull her out, I told her, I was like, we're just here. Exigent circumstances required us to be here. He's like, what are those? I think you'd have to talk to somebody no, else. No, I'll talk to his face, but I'm not going to talk to him on the phone. Do what? Yeah, no, I can talk to him on the phone. Okay. Is that your attorney? Yes. Okay. Hello, sir. Hey. Hey, it's Lieutenant Studley. Hey, so we're not going to have any uh, conversation over the phone. We'll probably do that in person. Is there a time that we can sit down and meet? Okay. Friday? Friday? Absolutely. What time Friday works for you? Um, well, do we do in the afternoon? You, you tell me what time I will be available. Um, Jody, what 4 o'clock on Friday work? Yeah. <laughs> Jody's like ASAP, you want please. Jody there, I presume. Yes. Not, not yet, but I, I can do that with, with you on the phone. But again, there won't be any dialogue. Um, we received a report of an emaciated juvenile um, that had duct tape around his uh, extremities that was asking for food and water. And based on that information, there are other people in the home. So we're ensuring that there is nobody else in the same condition. I wonder at this point if the lawyer was like, oh, shit. Or if he really, or if he, if he, I don't know if they're part of the same church or something, or if he also used her as like therapy, as like a therapist or whatever. Like, I don't know. I wonder if the lawyer was like, oh, shit. Or if it was like, oh, okay, we've done this before. That's nothing. I don't know. So under that X and sheets. Like if he's heard of this happening before, you know, like Jody doing some weird stuff with like other people with like in her church. Food and water. And based on that information, there are other people in the home. So we're ensuring that there is nobody else in the same condition. The lawyer. No. I, so under that X quit? and sheets. Uh, I don't know. I think it's the same lawyer. Uh, she'll talk about the lawyer soon enough. So we're ensuring that there is nobody else in the same condition. So under that X and sheet C, we've entered the home. Okay. And where, 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 where are we? Our going? police department is 55 North Main Street in Ivins. I believe they're still working on the custody, but the father might get custody. But listen to some of the jailhouse calls, okay, with Kevin Frankie. Oh, the jailhouse calls. One part was like, they were trying to, Ruby was like, hey, I'll let you have the house. So, you know, you and the kids can live there. I'll leave you guys alone. And he's like, oh, thank you so much. That'll help us a lot. So we, we, we can have custody. We, after knowing what his wife did to his children, he was still saying we can have custody. I'm like. And then he was telling her how much he loved her and how they're going to go through this together. And I'm like, oh, God. I don't know. I hate weak parents. I, I hate weak parents. Did you hear that, Adam? I did, yeah. And, and Jody, um, officer, thank you. I don't know if you're Yeah, no, we're here. 
you don't think it's the same lawyer because the defense is one of the most expensive it's possible that the lawyer that she has on the phone right now could just be like her personal lawyer that just handles like random shit and then maybe at some point she hired a like maybe like a criminal defense attorney maybe Yeah. Okay. Oh, Ruby's coming. Uh, yep. Actually, before I, I hang up, officer, can I talk to Joey just briefly? Absolutely. I will walk away and you are on your own. You think this attorney seems Adam? Oh, the one in the criminal case is Doug Terry. Okay. Yeah, because it's not uncommon. Sometimes when, like, shit happens, you just get, like, the attorney that used the mouse, and this attorney just may not be experienced in, like, um, criminal defense attorney stuff, you know? Oh, prime rib. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so at this point, she's already called Ruby to come and get her kids, but then Ruby's going to show up, and then she's going to realize that she's going to get called as well. What's his rate, Caitlin? Did she ever sell her house yet by any chance? All I know is that somebody needs to go draft a search warrant. So that's probably. Yeah, so. it's funny to hear them talk about, oh, okay, like, you know, Jody's going to be there 4 p.m. Friday. It's like, no, they're going to haul her butt right now. I don't know if she realizes that. All I know is that somebody needs to go draft a search warrant. So that's probably. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you that based on his info. You got her. He's straight in there. Yeah, that's why I thought it was, uh, I don't know. The, the decoration was, uh, it seems like one of those model homes. She doesn't have a husband. Uh, she's been divorced for quite some time. Maybe they're talking about Ruby Frankie. Initially, Ruby Frankie kicked Kevin out of the house. But then after she was arrested, she agreed to give the house back to Kevin so he can live there with the kids. Yeah, Jody's house, um, I guess, is still on the market for sale. Five million if anyone trying to buy it. Um, seems like there's a room we can't get into. We're Captain, 
Ruth Captain Yes. Yeah. yeah, in her book, she actually got divorced, I think, um, within two years or so, I think, of being married. And at that point, I think one of her children was like one years old at the time. I think. Captain's, uh... Hey, this, are you still have your attorney on the phone? Okay. I just want to advise you of our intentions. Um, it seems like there's a room we can't get into. We're getting some conflicting information. We're going to go draft a search warrant. We'll be right back, okay? I wonder if that's a safe room. What's that? What's he doing a search warrant? I'm just going to get a warrant from the judge. You're already here, though. I don't understand what that means. They'll explain it to you when they give it to you. So now they're going to get a search warrant because they're trying to get into the safe, I guess. No, I see your position. I imagine there's going to be some doomers to make you talk to. Getting conflicting information from... I don't know. I don't know who they talked to since we've been here. Like I said, they're all the reason... Lieutenant Stubbly said the reason why we're here is to make sure everybody was okay. Um, that everybody was, I mean, the condition we found. Um, the search warrant, I imagine, is going to be some, do a more in depth search of the house. Um, right now, it's just safety and security of the people. Got it. Make sure they're okay. No, I see your position. Yeah. That's why I'm crying. Yes. Yeah. I see why you think this is an issue. Yeah. It's Sad. Yeah. Wait, what? I see your position. That's why I'm crying. I could see why it's sad. Hey, Spring. How are you doing today? Moondog, Crosby. Hello, hello. No, Chompy was here earlier. Only five million. Tempting. The view is nice. <laughs> You're going to buy the house for me so I can make content in it? No, the house is cursed, okay? <laughs> it's cursed. Sorry. Let's yeah. just... um, right now, it's just safety and security of the people. Got it. Make sure they're okay. No, I see your position. Yeah. That's why I'm crying. Yeah. It's... I see why you think this is an issue. Yeah. No, I see your position. That's why I'm crying. I can see why you would think that it's an issue. Did you cry for the kids when they were crying? Did you see it from their perspective when you were torturing the kids? Or is it only now because there's an adult there, an authority figure, and you're trying to appeal to them? It's sad. Yeah. And she even admitted that it's sad. Eat a cactus, Jody! You got a giant bug, though. Back there. Yeah, it's on my to-do list. Just we got off the point. The guy came and did a... Spray? Spray and like three days later, I had bugs everywhere. All dead. Not work. Yeah. That one came a couple days later. I assume that made sure that it was, it yeah. was dead that way. That was a little intimidating. Yeah. I need to get Botox or something. I feel like I'm going to get permanent wrinkles just from like being like this. Like, I don't know, too much, watching too much true crime shit, man. <laughs> Hi, Bleep. What's up? What have you been up to? Oh, you sit on the couch. So you're not out here in the sun. You're, you're okay. You guys want to go sit down? Absolutely. Nah, let it roast in the Just sun. Let, make sure no one's in the bathroom and let her go in. Okay. Let it roast. I'm going to go right. They made the kids stand on the sun, no sunblock, no shade, no shoes on, and they live about two hours away from, from Vegas. I think I looked it up. It was like two hours away from Vegas or some shit. During the summertime, okay? Let her stay on the sun. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Cruel and unusual punishment. The true, yeah, the old true crime forehead. Yeah. She gets some Botox. Okay. Okay, that's Jody. Now, this is the safe that they were trying to get into. Oh, this is the journal entries. We'll get to that in a second. Um, this safe right here. This is safe. Yeah. 
Now, there's no audio in the beginning. I'm not quite sure why, so I'm just going to times two it. That's the safe that they were talking about. Remember, initially, when this all went down, people thought that the kids were locked in the safe. They were found in the safe. But we find out shortly enough that based on these journal entries, they did put the children in the safe. I need a facelift. I look mad all the time. Facelift is scary. I've seen people. I mean, I've seen like great results at some times, but the actual surgery and how you look right afterwards, it's so, so scary. It's like they got to take your face, lift it up and then re-staple it right here where your hairline is. Whew. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like still thinking if I would still do it when I'm older, if it's worth it. I don't know. I also get paranoid of like I'm going to die in surgery as well. Bald is so easy to maintain. Join the bald and beautiful club. Wait, Ken, you're not bald. Don't you have like beautiful, luscious hair? Can I shake my hair, please? <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? He's like a Frankenstein. Okay, so there's a fridge in here. Um, I'm not really quite sure why this room was built. It, it's really weird. On the exterior, it looks like a safe. But then once you get in there, it's like there's a bathroom in here. There's a refrigerator. There's a sink right there. I don't fucking know. It's really fucking creepy. They move your ears. Yeah, and there's like a little mattress right there. Maybe she was getting ready for the end of the world or if there was a break in, she could run in here and hide out maybe. But I don't see any food in here. You would expect like there would be, you know, some food. Uh, what the fuck is up with this? <laughs> what is up with this basement? Why is the laundry like that? Why, why is there a random stack washer dryer just on top of each other, like in the middle of the room? Maybe a panic room, but then, you know, I would expect there to be a cell phone in there or not a cell phone, but like a telephone in there, right? Like wired in. I don't know, man. That looks like a room that she used to just lock people up in there. Like, and I wonder who the fuck built this. Remember in the Timothy Farrader case, how I think, um, the contractor that built that really weird room. Didn't he go to the police and report it? Or was it like afterwards? But he like, I remember he's like, he was like, oh, it's kind of weird. They wanted me to build this room. Um, no lock on the out. Oh, wait, there's rope right there. Okay, so they're bagging that for evidence. No lock on the, uh, from the inside, just from the outside. A toilet, or sorry, no, there was a bucket in there. There was like lights. A fancy jail. Yeah, there's a microwave in there. Wait, they, they move your ears for facelifts? I thought they just move your face. Why would they move your ears? Shackles. Yeah, because if it was a panic room, I would expect there to be some food supplies in there. Um, in case you get trapped for a bit and like maybe like a cell phone hooked in or sorry, not a cell phone, telephone hooked in. I love how the, yeah, the toilet's right next to the kitchen. Yeah. Mm, next to the sink. Mm. Let's miss that stuff. Just have a seat on the couch. Is that Jody? 
Yeah, she's crying. Your mother-in-law had a facelift. They cut her ears badly. Oh, ouch. I can't understand these women, and that's good. It's because we're not psychopaths. And I don't understand how she talked so many people into this. Because these children, they're not her only victims. There's so many more. Yeah, I was thinking maybe the ears got damaged when, because my understanding, they probably have to cut right here in order to pull the skin back. So maybe they cut a little too much and like damage your uh, mother-in-law's ears or something. Just uh, Or maybe there's like some new girl. methods <laughs> where they got to like boy fuck with the here. ears. I don't know. Huh? I think she said they're staying with me for a little while. Did it end up healing, Abigail? What's the boy's name? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, Madonna looks, um, I don't know, maybe it's just bad angles or something. But I've seen the pictures of Madonna, and it's, it's kind of scary. Okay, let's look at a bit of her getting yeah, questioned. This, this is just your chance to tell us we're just trying to get your side of the story. I'm just going to stop out there, but again, my name is Detective Bates, and this is her. We're trying to get you in the paper. I think she's sitting in the seat for me. It's all about camera angles. I think it's in the house. That would be great. Can I get you any water, snacks? Who's getting water? Okay. Can be expected. 
How long have you lived here in Iowa? Uh, Six years. Six years? The same house? Wow. You married? Single? Where'd you move from? Eastern County. County. And how long were you up there for? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> You're that. You know, to be honest with you, if I was sitting over there, I'd be a little nervous too. So don't don't worry about it. We're just here to talk, to get your side. And right now we're just asking you just two cool questions. My county lived here, that kind of thing. I watched so. too many detective movies. <laughs> How are you? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> Me too. You can't, honestly, I, I sit there and I'm married and I sit there and watch those with my wife and I say, that, like, we don't, that's not how we do it. Hey, that's not right. So don't take, there's some good ones out there, don't get me wrong. But most of them are, are probably a little off base. We're not as mean. I won't get up and beat you up. We don't do that. We just want to get to know you a little, so if you just kind of want to share a little about yourself and what brought you. Hey, Sabrina. Thanks for tuning in. How are you? Down here. And... So I trust my attorney. He said, don't say anything. And I said, I have nothing to hide. And he's like, I know that. Rod! <laughs> Rod, thank you so much for the 111 on Twitch. How's your day going? Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. About yourself and what brought you down here and so I trust my attorney he said don't say anything and I said I have nothing to hide and he's like I know that but just let me be there with you when we talk so uh, uh, you guys seem nice people yeah I'm not trying to hide anything I'm trying to be difficult this is really if you knew all the pieces I think you'd have a lot of empathy well, if you knew all the pieces, I think you'll have a lot of empathy. Well, let's see. We'll get to the journal entries. Going on. That's and really what we're looking That's what we're looking for. And you're an adult. And the thing about our interview, if we ask you any questions that you don't want to answer, you can just tell us, I don't want to answer that question. But we do want to have a basis and an understanding of what's going on in that home or what went on up north that brought them into your home. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to share any of that and you don't want to answer any other questions, that's okay. I, I'd like to just tell you, but I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're gonna flip my words, I, I don't know. And that's the good thing about cameras, everything, it's pretty much double recorded audio, video. I'm sorry, my face right now. Madonna drinks her own pee and gets blood transfusion to keep her looking young for <laughs> She What do you mean she drinks her own pee? She does not. What am I seeing in chat right now? <laughs> Her website is uh, nuts. Uh, the connections website. Okay, sorry. I was distracted for a second there. Very distracted. She does not. No way. She does not. About our interview, if we ask you any questions that you don't want to answer, you can just tell us, I don't want to answer that question. But we do want to have a basis and an understanding of what's going on in that home or what went on up north that brought them into your home. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to share any of that and you don't want to answer any other questions, that's okay. I, I'd like to just tell you, but I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're going to flip my words. I, I don't know. And that's the good thing about cameras, everything. It's pretty much double recorded audio, video, and it's for the safety of for you and for us because we don't want to flip your words. And this will all be pretty much right there to support you. So we're not no, gonna use anything attorney, against you. be so insistent then. He's an honest, good man, goes to church. I trust him, why would he say that to me then? I don't know. I don't, I don't know your attorney, to be honest. Well, I'm just but saying he's, he's, a, he's a good, honest man. man. Yeah, I don't and know. I'm an honest person as well, so we get along great. And he just said, do not say anything. Maybe just as an attorney, they just, they always, say that, huh? they always want to be with their client. I'm not sure, but like I said, at any time, if you don't want to answer a question, I don't know. Anyone else thought she was gonna? That was kind of weird. He's a good, honest man, and I'm a good, honest person too. That's why we get along so great. <laughs> okay. You don't have to. So the ball's really in your court on what you do want to answer and what you don't. So. Well, I think it it looks sad that I don't want to answer anything, but it's not because I'm trying to be difficult. I'm really hanging on what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's your attorney? Adam, 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 uh, his father's an attorney. Oh no, lycanthropy. 
the bot timed you out. I think because of too many dot dot dots and exclamation marks. Um, I don't know how to untime you out. It's not working. If my mods are here, maybe they can do it for you. Me, please. I don't know what they are. His brother's an attorney. Is he, is he local? Yeah. Is it local? I don't know. He's down um, the street where the town hall is. Oh, they all have the same name. The whole yeah. reason we're sitting here today is we just, we, there's a lot of questions we have that we just, maybe have misunderstandings that we just mm -hmm. need to clarify. And I know, and I'd love to tell you if you were here, because I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with what I say, you know, I, I watched, I'm a psychologist, I've watched people flip things all the time, <laughs> so I get it, and I, I, I sit on your side, I get it. I sit on your side. I'm one of you guys. Oh God, gross. Okay. Um, I did look it up really quick and it seems that Madonna did once drink her own pee after having an ice bath at 3 a.m. I, I, I guess I guess that's true. She, she, she did it once. I don't know. And there's a picture of her with her in the bath with a teacup of pee. I, I, okay, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to move on from this. I so I get it. I, I, I sit on your side. I watched, I'm a psychologist. I've watched people flip things all the time, <laughs> so I get it. I, I, I sit on your side, I get it. I wish people didn't do that, but they do. Well, if you're not willing to answer any of the questions about yourself, would you be willing to answer any questions maybe about Ruby or Kevin that you could help us understand? We just honestly want to understand what what their dynamic is, what happened to the children, what caused their separation. Right. And after talking to Kevin, it sounds like you know a lot about their dynamic mm -hmm. and their relationship. So if you could help us understand that at the least, that would be awesome. And that's nothing incriminating towards yourself because it's not pertaining to you. So if you could help us understand that. Jody, we're we're going to do this. You asked for your attorney, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'd like to maybe talk to you later when you have your attorney here present. Absolutely. And, he, and we'll go he made an appointment at 4 she, on he made, Friday. Okay. <laughs> he made an appointment at 4 on a Friday. <laughs> He's on the way right now. Oh, God, she's got to sit there for a bit. Here. With, at your, at 4? He talked to the, to the officer. Okay. And said, can we make a time? And he said out loud, do not talk to them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll talk and see if we can schedule that. And maybe that's just something we we just do with your attorney. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? Anything we can answer in the meantime? No. Okay. No. All right. Appreciate your time. We'll uh, hang out again tight in here, and then we'll come back and get you, and we'll be on our way, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, but was Madonna, like, desperate to become relevant or something? Why would she... Sorry, oh my God, I'm getting so many ads. What is this? <laughs> this is a picture of her sitting in the bathtub with her pee in her cup. Oh, my God. Okay, this is what happens when chat derails you into like really weird stuff on the side. Okay, um, we're concentrating right now. Let's go to Ruby Frankie's husband. 45 minutes. Um, I think there's a time where he kind of just sits there, so it's not super long. All right, let's do this. Listen, I heard that drinking Pete was not good for you, especially when you're out, like, you know, when you're out stranded in the, um, oh, wait, no, sorry. I'm thinking about salt water, seawater. I know drinking seawater is not good if you're stranded, like, in the middle of the ocean somewhere because it would dehydrate you more because of all, like, the salt contents in it. But I thought, like, drinking urine is something that, oh, no, it was in this movie where there's a rock climber whose arm got stuck between the rocks, right? I feel like if you drink your own urine, that's only, like, desperate measures, right? Or should you still not drink your urine? I don't know. Don't blame chat for your weird YouTube views. Listen, my internet, my internet history is already like, and it's because of you guys. It's not because of me. It's because of you guys. But, you know, I am entertaining the Miranda rights before we start. We're just kind of, kind of ask you, okay. If it's not beneficial to you and then we're done. So there's no way and we're nowhere. And sure. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. okay. One of the police officers during the questioning, I find them to be very annoying. Can you guys see which one it is? Okay, so just for starters, what was your full name? Kevin William Frankie. 
How to spell that? K E V I N W I L L I A M F R A N K E. And what's your name first? What's a good address for you? Uh, my, well, I'm not comfortable giving my address right now. Okay. But you do live in Springville? I do. How long have you lived in Springville for? Um, I moved there in 2007 with my family, so okay. was many, 17 years. So, and how many kids do you have, Kevin? I have six kids. And what are their names? Or? No. I haven't seen them for over a year. Any of them? No. None of them. For a year? Over a year. Okay, I've so. been in a separation. From who? From my wife and family. What's your wife's name? Ruby. Ruby. When was the last time I saw Ruby? The last time. He hasn't seen them for a year and a half. I just have a hard time believing why you wouldn't want to check on the children. Like, yes, you're separating from your wife, but why not check up on your children? That seems kind of weird. And especially since they're all so young, it's not like they're all like, you know, in their 17s and 18s or doing their own thing. Some of the kids were really young, like as young as like, I don't know, like teens and like before teens, right? And I saw her yeah. was... The 18th of, of this month, we met to, she requested me to sign over vehicles, or the titles to the vehicles, the vehicle that she drives that were all in my name. When's the last time you physically saw Russell or Eve? Um, the day that I moved out, July 24th, 2022. 24th of 2022. Or July 25th. July 25th. So it's my understanding that, that at least home here in, in Kanta and Ivan's. Have you been to that home? No. You've not been to that home? Uh, no, I don't know. Do I don't know, know what's anything that's been going on. Like, this is good, man. Like, I would love to be able to help you out with this. And, like, I'm seeing a lot of things in this channel because I'm, I'm unaware of your involvement in, in what's really going on. So, for you to say that you're unaware of the status of your kids kind of makes, I don't know, that sounds kind of crummy to you, but it sounds kind of good to me. Like, who lives in that home with your... Is it ex-wife? Is it currently a separated wife? Like, who lives in that home with your children? To be honest, I don't know. I, I know that she's there with um, four of the children and our two older children. No, the dad wasn't found guilty of anything. Um, they don't believe he was involved. His name was never mentioned in the journal entries that Ruby Frankie kept. So they don't have any evidence that he was involved with, like, the abuse during that time frame. I don't know at this point if it was still a BYU professor. They're not at your home in Springville. Uh, and I'm not trying to where, trip you up. I can see you're hesitant to talk to me. I understand that. Well, where, where I live? No, yeah. I haven't seen them for over a year. Okay. That's tough. I can only imagine how that feels, man. I got kids and not seen for that long. That would, that would tear a little piece of my heart out. Of age to drive. Does she drive? I don't know. Okay. Like I said, I don't. I know nothing that's going on in so, their lives or anything going on. How did you find out that you needed to come here to 55 North Main Street? I received a message that I needed to come pick up my kids from the police department in Highlands. And who was that message from? Uh, well, I prefer not to say it right now. Why? It would just help us a lot. Now, we find out later that it was Ruby Frankie that contacted Kevin to tell him to come and get the kids. But right now, they're asking him, like, oh, who told you to come? And he's like, oh, I don't want to tell you. It's like, why not? I don't know, like, I guess maybe I'm not seeing his angle. I'm trying to see why he wouldn't want to tell the police officers who told him to come get the kids. I'm trying to figure out who reached out to you because it makes sense that that would happen. I'm just not aware of anyone who did that from our department. 
Right. And, and I'm not comfortable saying right now who reached out Why? to me. Why? Okay. So Hi, Dinkelberg. How are you doing today? How's it going? Um, he was BOIU professor until 2023 of June. What was he doing afterwards? Like, what has he been doing this entire time? Or is it because the semester ended in June and he quit during the summertime? Or what was going on, I guess? So, you haven't seen any of your kids in over a year, you said? That's correct. And then, what was the last time you saw her? How old is she now? 15. She's 16. Okay. And then when all the kids left, Ruby took all of them? Um, yeah, she stayed in the house and I moved up. Okay. And did you ever try to reach out to the kids, drop by the home, or no. was there? I honored the no separation boundary that we agreed to. So what there was, was no your separation? Contact boundary, excuse me. Did you have a no contact order in place? Order? No, this was between my wife and I. So what did Ruby ask of you when you separated? What did she ask of me? Did she ask you not to contact the kids? Ruby invited me to leave the home mm -hmm. while I um, thought about the, the choices that I have made in my life and the way that I treated her. Okay. And so I left. And how long had you and Ruby been married before? We were married in 2000. So about 22 years? Uh, when we separated, we were going on 22 years. Yes. Okay. Oh my God, they were married for that and long? during your marriage, how was, how was disciplining your kids? How would you discipline your kids? Um, yeah, Kevin, tell us how you would yeah, discipline your I'm kids. Not going to answer that question. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, that's fine. No. Have, have you been since separated or since they lived here in the city of Ivins? Um, have you communicated with your wife regarding, like, discipline with your kids or their care or their physical well-being? No. So is she doing this on her own and just telling you how your kids are? She's not telling me anything about the kids. Who's this? Who's this uh, female Jody that your wife lives with? Do you do you know a female named Jody? She is a, a therapist and a life coach. I know, and she's. Do you respect her? Uh, do I respect her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she is a very honest, truthful you, person. Yes. Okay. You place value on Jody. I don't know what that means. Like do you do you, you value what she says and, and how she treats? Is your wife a client of hers? Is your wife a partner of hers? Is your wife a roommate with her? Is your kids are really I don't know, man. Just something about Kevin and Ruby. I feel like there's just something so off about the two of them. And the two of them are parents to six kids. I don't know, man. They're like they're just like their demeanor is just so weird. I don't know if at this point, if he was just kind of like, like he, he seems like he's brainwashed, but it's been a year and a half since he's seen his, you know, has been with his wife and kids. Like what have you been doing all this time, Kevin? I don't know. It, I feel like there's just something about their demeanor. is just like so weird. I'm trying to say, I'm not aware of that, but I know that they've been, in business for the last year filming who's they ruby and jody they ruby. Film. and remember ruby frankie was adamant about during her sentencing she's like we were not business partners but then everyone was saying oh they were business partners they were doing work together for the last year filming who's they ruby and jody they ruby film jody. they film podcasts and so every week a podcast goes up and i listen to it <laughs> what's the name of it uh, connections with an X. Like C O N. C O N N E X I O N S. Yeah. And now like, do you support them in that role in doing that and having. Do I support them in the business? Yeah, like do you, do you support them and think that what they're doing is a good thing or. Yeah, I support their business efforts. I think it's a good thing. Are you involved with their business efforts or. No. So just Ruby and Jody. 
Okay. In the business? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And were you involved in the eight passengers account with your family? Um, yes. I was in the videos, and that's what you mean. I briefly learned about this two hours ago. <laughs> so, did Ruby more so do the videos for the family? Mm -hmm. And how long did you guys do that for? Uh, she started the channel in 2015. And as far but you know, oh, shit, what the fuck? Because uh, remember his demeanor when he, remember the body cam footage of him trying to file charges on Sherry Frankie, the the oldest of the of the kids, and how he was talking to the police officers. Like he was definitely more aw awake, more animated. I feel like right now he's just like, oh uh, yeah, I'm like a zombie right now. What? What are you talking about? Oh, I I don't know. I don't know. like <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I fucked up. I pressed some weird button of my own. So when did Ruby and Yes, and okay. and I supported it. And so together we held boundaries. Is that something you and Ruby So Oh, and they talk about Chad as well. That's a good question. Um we uh we had a son who was sorry i'm just trying to find where i was earlier so I left immediately from my job and drove down here financially provide for i was trying to figure out do you know her phone number off the top of your head towards the end of 2021 That's okay i briefly learned about this two <laughs> hours ago <laughs> so did ruby more so do the videos for the family Mm -hmm. And how long did you guys do that for? Uh, she started the channel in 2015, and as far as as I'm aware, from the time I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Oh my god, he talks so slow. I left. The last video she uploaded was towards the end of 2021, okay. and I but again, I'm not aware of anything she's done since our separation. Okay. I don't. Visit the past person anymore. <laughs> chapter of your life, it's gone. It, it, it's a past chapter, yeah. So, how do you and Ruby communicate? Just through text, phone call? Through text, and if there's anything considered an emergency, we agree that we would communicate through a phone call. Okay, and do you know her phone number off the top of your head? Off uh, the top of my head? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, no worries. So, how often would you guys communicate while she was down here? Well, I don't know how often or long she was down here. We've communicated maybe four times in 2023 since January. So are you aware of how she disciplines the kids or how she handles no. the kids with behavioral issues or anything like that? No. So you're unaware of how she does that? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of the physical condition of your children? No. Why not? I'm, I've chosen to trust my wife with the children. That was part of the agreement of our separation. Is that you allow her to physically provide for the needs of the child? Are you just removed from that? Are you pay support? I know this is personal questions, but... No, yes, my job is to financially provide for the I was trying to figure out like, how, how much of a role do you play in the caretaking of specifically... Is it... It kind of looks like he's wearing maybe a work uniform, but I, but I don't know. It's just BYU on there. Maybe he was still working for BYU or maybe he was taking on a different role. He said that he just left work. So I don't, I, w I don't see why he would wear like a BYU shirt to work. Of those two kids? I, I pay the bills. Okay. So with my, my job, I provide the money, it goes into a shared bank account. And that's my only involvement. Okay. Um, like there's a whole bunch of things I want to talk to you about, but I, I still can't get over the fact that someone notified you to come here to pick up your kids. My guess is, was that was that uh, Jody? No, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. All, all I'll say is well, you, someone you said you trusted you. her. You said that you think she's not as I asked you if you placed value. Notified you to come here to pick up your kids. My guess is, was that... Was that uh, Jody? 
No, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. All, all I'll say is... Well, you, someone you said you trusted her. her. You said that you think that she's... Not I asked you if you placed value on her, but you, you obviously... She is an honest... I know her to be an honest and a trustworthy individual. I feel like they're all robots repeating the same thing, because that's what Jody was saying, too. My lawyer, he's an honest person. I'm an honest person. And now he's saying, Jody is an honest person. And so, yeah, I trust her. And um, I received a communication that... And so I left immediately from my job and drove down here. That's all I know. I've come to pick up my kids and to take them home with me. Do you have any, is there a custodial paperwork that says that you're like a, there's, there's no custodial paperwork denying you of rights, correct? Uh, there's no custodial paperwork at all. Period. It's, it's so the kids are yours. I guess like I have a hard time because it's weird, right? You haven't been in contact with your children for, what was it, like 18 months or something like that? All of a sudden, your ex-wife that's separating with you, or your wife that's, you know, you're separating with, she messages slash calls you and tells you, hey, show up at the police department, come pick up the kids. I don't see why in the beginning of this police interview, he wouldn't be like, how are my kids? Are they okay? Where are they? What's what's going on? Where are my kids? Are they doing okay? Like, I, I feel like you would just be, you'd be yelling at the police officers to ask about how your kids are. Where are they? What's going on? He's like, oh, hey. Yeah, I'm Kevin Frankie. Oh, uh, I'm not going to give you my, my home address, no. Yeah, you know, my wife and I, we, like, separated. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. Like, I don't, it's like, <laughs> maybe there was a portion where he already talked to law enforcement before this part that we didn't see where he was asking about the kids. But I'm sure at that point, they still wouldn't give him any updates, right? They'd probably wait, like, hey, you know, we'll tell you in a little bit. Get into the room. Let's talk in the interrogation room. But like still in the beginning or like throughout, like he's not like, where are my kids? Are they OK? Because the questions that they're asking is pretty weird. It's like, oh, how do you guys discipline your kids? Do you know what condition your kids are in right now? When's the last time you talked to Russell? I feel like you'd be jumping in and be like, what's going on? He's just kind of like, yeah, OK, like I'm just what's up? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> All right. OK, yes. We, this was a, just a verbal agreement between my wife and I when we said mm -hmm. last year. Well, what questions do you have? Oh, I want to know what's going on and why I was asked to come down and pick up my two kids. I want to know what's going on and why I was asked to pick up my two kids. I feel like it's the way that he's phrasing the question. It's like, why am I here? Why do I have to pick them up? It's not like, oh, what's going on? Like, how's my kids? Like, how are my kids? Are they okay? Are they healthy? Like, are they good? Are they dead? Like, what's going on? Well, we no, a lot of that kind of hinges on who asks you. Because if we had been the one, like, I'm, I'm not going to say you fit, but I'm, I'm confident a cop didn't call you because we weren't. And I hate it how the police officer on the left side, he keeps fucking interrupting. Okay? Let, let the other police officer talk. Like, she'll start talking, and then he just fucking keeps interrupting. It's, like, so annoying. Anyways, I hate it when they do that, when they're doing interrogations, and then one officer keeps interrupting the other. <laughs> no, a lot of that kind of hinges on who asks you, because if we had been the one, like, I'm, I'm not going to say you fit, but I'm, I'm confident a cop didn't call you because we wouldn't have wanted you down here at this point in our investigation. So, having said that, I, I think it's time we, we'd be honest with you, right? Sure. No, and, and I didn't lie. You're so someone contacted me, but I don't want to you said say without someone a from your office. But okay. <laughs> the guy, listen, I understand. Yeah, the one on the left, he's definitely emotional. He's definitely angry about this whole thing. But he needs to like, he needs to tone it down a little bit, okay? Because I feel like he's being really aggressive. He's giving Kevin an attitude. Like, let's try to get as much information as we can from him. Okay, let's, let's, just, let's just do that. Like, the good cop, bad cop thing is not really working because the bad cop right now is just taking up way too much space, too much time, okay? <laughs> like, you can tell he's like, <laughs> that cop is angry, okay? <laughs> but I don't want to you say without from your office, but okay. <laughs> uh, well, I don't recall 
was studying something for my office. Our office. office. Yeah. Someone, Someone, yeah. So we don't know who called you. So right. if we knew who called you, then we could help you. It would make more sense. But. Well, I don't know the legal ramifications of implicating individuals who contacted me. So without a lawyer here, I don't want to answer that question. That's okay. But you're, you're... So he wants to protect his wife no matter what, because he doesn't know what's going on. He wants to make sure she's protected. <sighs> God. You want to know specifics of the case, which we can't share right now because it's under investigation. So... I see. Yeah. So we would like to ask questions about where you found out, but we'll respect that if you don't want to share that information. But I am curious, when you guys had the previous Eight Passengers YouTube channel, you guys got a lot of heat for neglect and child Yes, this one, asking all the right questions. Let's go. Eight Passengers YouTube channel, you guys got a lot of heat for neglect and child abuse. A lot of people commented those things on there. Why were they commenting those things? That's a good question. Um, we... Uh, we had a son who was acting out in very selfish behavior. And this was Chad. Chad was the one where they took his door away. I think Chad was not sleeping in a regular bed, but he was in a beanbag for a couple of months. Sorry, when I say couple, I don't mean two. I mean like a lot of months. Like was it like six or eight months or something like that, I think. And Chad was the one that was sent to this camp for discipline for teenagers um there's this one video where ruby frankie is sitting down with chad um i think it was sherry and then there's another child there as well and it's a really sad video where the kids are sitting there saying like oh you know we, we don't have friends like we're sad and then chad's like oh yeah like i slept in the bean bag for like six or eight months or something like that and then people were like whoa there's a lot of red flags here what is going on um, and I think that's what initially probably led to people reporting them for child abuse. And I think CPS was called on them like numerous of times and they had to, both Kevin and Ruby had to deal with like the backlash. Um, I think that was like one of the major moments that blew up on the internet, I think. Is this Chad or is yeah, this was Chad. And you know, none of this is strange or odd. You could get on YouTube and find out all sorts of stuff on this. It's but like a double-edged sword. Yeah, the question is, what do you believe, right? There, yeah. there was even an article written in um, Newsweek magazine in 2020 on it. And, or News, was it Newsweek? No, Business Insider, where we were interviewed. And, and we were pretty straightforward and we talked about it and we shared our piece in that. Basically, it boils down to he was being uh, very cruel and mean to his siblings that he shared a room with. And so we removed him from the room. And we said, you can sleep anywhere you want. Sleep on the couch, sleep on the pull-out bed, sleep on the floor for all we care. But you're not sleeping in that room with your brother. He chose to sleep on a beanbag. So. I mean, he was a teenager at this time, you know, because like sometimes teenagers, they do weird things. OK, sometimes teenagers, they just try to be a little bit extra and they're like, oh, fine, I'll just sleep on a beanbag then. You're the parent. OK, you're the parent. You allowed that child to sleep on a beanbag for what, six, seven, eight months. I forgot how long it was, but it was a couple few months. You're the parent here in the situation. Nine months later. Nine months. Okay. Nine months. They allowed that child to sleep in a fucking beanbag. He, At that point, wouldn't you just have to be like, you know what, Chad? This is ridiculous. I know you're just doing it trying to be funny, but Chad, get out of the fucking beanbag. We'll sleep in the fucking bed. Okay. We have a pull-out couch over there. Like. <laughs> he had made a lot of changes in his life and he was ready to, and, and we had moved by that time. And so we had a new house and he was ready to move into his own bedroom. No, I think Chad said that when they moved into the new house, he didn't have a bedroom to sleep in. They didn't give him a bedroom to sleep in. Made a video about it. And in the video, he mentioned something of the effect of, I've been sleeping for nine months on a beanbag. And that is what all the uproar was about. What did you and it wasn't just that. It was them sitting there saying how 
They didn't have friends. They haven't had iPhone, iPad, any communication whatsoever. It was like there's so much packed into that one segment in that video. It wasn't just Chad complaining about the beanbag. It was like everything else that was going on. It was just like, oh, my God, like this is some like fuck situation here with the kids. They're being isolated. You guys do help like with his behavior issues. Is that, is that something you and Ruby talked about together? Is, mm -hmm. And then did you... Because if I'm going to play devil's advocate here, okay? If I play devil's advocate for, uh, what's this fucker's name? Uh, Kevin Frankie. From Kevin's Frankie perspective, it's possible that he truly didn't believe that he was, you know, abusing his children anyway during the eight passenger stuff, right? And that online people were just having an uproar for no fucking reason, right? And now that he's being called to police station, maybe he thinks the same thing is happening. We're like, oh, you know, I'm sure they're getting in trouble for something. I trust Jody. I trust Ruby. I'm sure they're just getting in trouble for something and people are just blowing it out of proportion. So it's possible that could be his mindset right now, which is why he's treating it so like cavalier in such a way where he's just like, OK, like this is not serious. Like I'm just chilling here. That's possible. It might be where he's at. Or a lot of people think that he or deal was going on. Or a lot of people just think that he doesn't give a fuck or maybe a combination of some of them. And yeah, he, no, he used the word cruel, cruel, because when you think of cruel, you think of like, I don't know, I started thinking to like dark spaces, like, okay, what was Chad doing to the brother? Like, was he like physically harming the kid? Like, what was he doing? Or was it just like, you know, being teenager, tra like pranking your siblings, maybe once in a while you get in a fight, you hit, a hit each other. Like, I don't know. I just remember hearing that Chad pranked um, the youngest son, I think, and told him to get get ready, get packed. We're going to go to Disney World. The kid got packed up and he was ready to go. And then like Chad's like, haha, just kidding. We're not going to Disney World. I remember hearing about that. But I don't know. He used the word cruel. Cruel has like a way different connotation than mean or bullying. Well, bullying maybe could be cruel, depending on how bad you bully. Helping you discover yourself and fix behavioral issues and things like that. Is that, is that something you and Ruby sought out? to help correct like some of the things yes and okay and i supported it and so together we held boundaries for our son like, it's crazy to me that they describe chad's behavior as cruel unless there were other things going on behind the scenes that we don't fucking know but they describe it as cruel, but when he talks about how him and his wife treat their kids, I don't know. I don't think they ever use the word cruel on their own, right? Like labeling themselves, like how they treated the kids to me seems pretty fucking cruel, isolating them, taking them, uh, taking away their, um, I don't know, like it's forms of communication with their friends, right? There was a summertime where they didn't get to hang out with anyone. They were just there with their family. Like they didn't get to do shit. Um, and it seems like they were just being punished for, for stupid shit, for things that like, you know, normal kids and teenagers do. And I can't imagine all six of them would have been, you know, doing something that was so horrendous that they had to be isolated from other people. I don't know. I, I feel like, t to me, their type of parenting was cruel. To support his... Yeah, I do have the journal entries up. Uh, I think we're going to do it after this. I supported it. And so together we held boundaries for our son to support his choosing honest responsible choices and when he chose honest and responsible choices consistently is when he began to get his privileges back and that was that, was, there, me. Well, that was the other word right yeah. and, and so um but yes um through 2000 right and then using food to manipulate your kids that's also cruel All right, this part is muted right now. Does anyone know if he has custody of the kids? Um, I believe that's all still pending. I know they sealed a lot of it. Um, it's all private, but I think it's still pending because I think they would announce if the kids were back in his custody or not. But listen to the jailhouse calls between him and Ruby Frankie. Because he says when we have custody, meaning he was still hoping to give her custody after all this shit that went down. After realizing what she did to their kids, he was still hoping that both of them, okay, because he says we, 
would have custody. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. Kevin, don't give Kevin custody. <laughs> don't give Kevin custody. Most contact separation boundary with, uh, that I agreed to with my wife. But I understand that he's um, 18, living on his own, somewhere in Provo, and working and supporting himself. What other kids went down to visit Jody? What other kids? Yeah, did you send any of the other kids down to oh, spend we didn't time with send Jody? Down to spend time with Jody, they would meet on Zoom. Ah, okay. uh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, we were in the spring stuff. Uh -huh. Well, even in 2019, we would shoot and meet with Jody. So, when did Ruby and Jody, to your knowledge, like decide to collaborate, come together, and mesh lives? Because that's what it that's what's happened. Well, the, they decided to start a business. Start a business. So that goes against what Ruby was saying. Ruby was like, oh, I'm not on her payroll. We're not business partners. Remember she said that in sentencing? In 2021. So while you, while you and Ruby were together? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, but there were, you know, at that period, it was pretty nebulous. I, I don't know. What's yeah. that word mean? <laughs> it, was, it was just a lot of talk and okay. everyone like, saw the plans. It was, let's start by, you know, doing podcasts together. And, and then that's all I know. I know that uh, they published a book together recently. You can find it on Amazon. It's Wait, they published a book together recently on Amazon? Oh, God. Uh, it was secret. Um, was business thriving? Like, life was good? Wait, what was the book called? Secret something? Wait, what? Uh, Ruby, Frankie, book, secret. Some popping up. It's on Amazon. It's, oh, it's probably taken down already, though. If you guys find the book, um, let me know. Between those two? Uh, well, not that I was aware. Well, at some point, and again, I'm not digging into your life, but I'm trying to understand this. At some point, we took, they kick you out? When you talk about a business, you know, thriving uh -huh. in terms of business and money, when, when we stopped eight passengers on YouTube, we lost 90% of our income. So we said a business was thriving. Damn, 90% of their income. They were, <laughs> they were relying on the eight passengers YouTube channel. Um... I was never punished with starvation. Like, when I was a kid, there were things like... I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't think it really happened to me. I'm trying to think. Did I ever? Maybe it will be like if we're eating and then like I like made like a like a quip or a snark or something. And my mom, she might dismiss me from the table. Like, OK, you know what? You can leave now. <laughs> but it didn't mean that I wouldn't eat for the entire fucking day. I would eat like in a couple hours or something like that. Um, like that would be maybe common when we were kids. Like you're just like, OK, you know what? No dinner. Go get out. Leave. And then you would just eat the next day. Uh, or if you're like really fucking picky and you didn't want to eat, it's like, okay, then don't eat. That's about it. But it wasn't like, hey, you can't have your breakfast until you do all of your chores. <laughs> it was more like you can't go outside and play until you do all your chores or something like that. Um, never like food manipulation, you know? I mean, uh, in my perspective, no. Got it. I don't think it ever was. After was, that. was that part of your guys' reason for separation after you guys ended eight passengers uh was that part of the reason um uh, the i don't know if they already asked this but they asked him if jody and ruby were partners and he didn't address that the reasons are because of, of ways that i treated my wife and um <laughs> And some um, of my own uh, addictions that I was working through and seeking help on with um, with uh, pornography. It seems like this is such a common theme with men that are like Mormon. It's like, oh, I'm addicted to porn. I'm addicted to porn. When in reality, it's just like, okay, like once in a while, sometimes you want to look at porn. Like there's nothing wrong with that. When are they going to realize that it's just normal? It's just fucking normal to just look at porn. Like there's nothing wrong with it. I don't, 
I don't know. It's so crazy to see how much shame and punishment is being forced upon, you know, men. And maybe there are some women there too, right? And it's just like, you know, I have this, I've got this addiction to porn. Like there's a difference between porn addiction and you just like looking at porn like a normal person. I don't know. It, doesn't it feel like if there's, are there, if there's so many other people that are suffering from the same condition as you, maybe it's just really fucking normal. Like, I don't know. It seems like he has probably been shamed to death, maybe by his wife, maybe by, you know, Jody, maybe by other members of his church. They're like, hey, you have a porn addiction. Like, shame on you. That's fucking disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. But, like, if there's so many people that are suffering from the same thing, maybe it's just a common thing after all. But, uh, I don't know. I'm not a religious person. Mm. Is that I treated my wife. And, um... <laughs> and so, um of my own addictions that I was working through and seeking help on with, um, Right. That's my understanding as well, that they're not even supposed to look at porn at all, like zero. If you look at porn like once, twice, that's porn addiction right there. So, and we've heard that from so many other stories from people who are Mormons and they've been accused of having a porn addiction. It's like, oh, you have a porn addiction. Okay. Like what's going on? Oh, I don't know. Like once in a while, like I would just like look at porn. Uh, I would look at a Victoria's Secret model. I would look at a magazine. It's like, wait, what? Are you sure this is a porn addiction? But I mean... If you look at it maybe a couple times, maybe that's considered porn addiction because you're not supposed to look at it at all, period. Uh, pornography. Thank you for sharing that. And I've, yeah, I've made some wonderful progress. Like, is that something you came to the realization that you needed help and weren't doing things right? Or is that something that, like, Jody helped you guys recognize that maybe Ruby needed more? I'm trying to understand her involvement in your guys' life. Um, She's my focus, so just to be honest. I understand and I, I can perceive that. Um, Jody and Ruby have a, um, a close relationship and, and Jody saw the need for me to get help. And um, frankly, I agree. I, the space um, has been exactly what I need to face you know, my own um, addictions and, and receive the support. Now. I just remember hearing in Adam's interview, in um, Adam Paul State, he did an interview with the Mormon podcast, and he was talking about how there was a time where he had these magazines, it was probably like Victoria's Secret magazines or something like that, that he like looked at, and they're like, oh, you're looking at porn, you get a porn addiction. And he's like, yeah, I mean, and, and I think at that point, they, like, convinced him that it was, and he was convinced at the time. But for everyone else that was listening, we're just like, wait, what? It's crazy. All that I've needed. And so the space has been um, very, very... Wait, they blocked... Wait, Texas blocked... No, they did not, did they? <laughs> wait, when what, did that happen? Very good for me. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, stated that you and Ruby had this no contact... That you guys just verbally agreed upon was that an idea given by Jody that she recommended you guys have that space and not contact one another? I'm not aware of that. It, the the invitation for me to leave and take space was from my wife. Okay. But that was while Jody and Ruby were friends and collaborating and doing podcasts and sure. Well, you're the, you're the custodial parent of these children. I don't see why we can't explain to you what, why we're involved. So I don't recall the exact time, but sometime before 11 o'clock today, we received uh, a phone call from 911 on our dispatch that uh, a 12 to 13 year old boy was knocking on doors in the neighborhood asking for food and water, that he was severely emaciated, that he had... What is emaciated? Skinny, scrawny, uh, malnutritioned, not enough food. Not I'm not going to post the pictures on here, um, but there is a... There's a news website that posted the pictures of Russell's condition. Um, you can totally see his, his bones. His shoulder bones were popping out and not in a very normal, healthy way, obviously. Like, he definitely looks emaciated. You can see, like, probably, like, the side of his ribs, the backbones a little bit. His arms are super, super skinny. Like, he looks very frail. 
And then you can see the injuries with the duct tape being wrapped around his wrist, the duct tape being wrapped around his ankles as well. And then it looks like he was restrained. So um, I'll post a link in the Discord. If you're in the Discord, it's on there. And then uh, it's on Fox 13 too. So you guys can also Google it as well. But I put the link in the Discord. Wait, what did that happen, Ken? I had no idea. Porn has been uh, banned in Utah for like two. But like porn is not just on Pornhub. Porn is like everywhere. It's not just on Pornhub. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, what about OnlyFans? Is OnlyFans banned in Texas or Utah? It's a stained life. So he had, I'm sorry, what? He had duct tape on his extremities, on his hands, on his ankles, and those were covering rope burns that were used to tie him down. Take a second and think about what I just said. That's the condition of your son. Given that information, your son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted by the Department of Child and Family Services to remove from your wife's care. So no one right now is going to have access to these two children based on their physical condition. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you, would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, That's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of the treatment of these, these based precious on children. No. But again, I don't know the details or I don't know what's going on, but as you described that, that sounds horrible horrible disgusting no human being should be treated like that i yeah okay that's my thoughts but again we might be different on that um, we're gonna like sit here for a second okay we're gonna go out and talk um i'm not saying you're you're still not free to go are you under arrest? Absolutely not. We just have lots of questions that we need to figure out. Lots. Uh, okay? Okay. Because... Your, your children are under medical care right now. And what does that mean? And it means that you don't have access to them. My understanding is that they are... What is that? They're in the custody of DCFS. And they will be for the next seven... There's a medical hold on them right now. So for at least the next 72 hours. Based on... Our understanding? At least the next seven years. During observation, they're, they're being watched. DCFS sure is going to provide you that information and they can better answer your questions along those lines. That's handled through them. Okay. Right. So we'll be back. So I want you to think about some things, though. I don't know. I don't know. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to think about that for a minute. So I have no idea where they're at. Well, I don't either. But, um... Okay, we're going to hop out here. We'll be back in a minute, okay? That's still recording audio and video, okay? So if you would, don't make any phone calls. Sure. I think it's possible that he is just very shocked. But I don't know. I don't really have too much comment. Like, he looks like he could be just really shocked. But I know why a lot of people are very skeptical about his reaction. Hey, Storm, how's it going? Yeah, him trying to press charges on his daughter was not a good look.
<laughs> Storm. Storm was like, I didn't know pH was banned in Texas. Oh. Well, I mean, they did tell Kevin that it's still recorded. So maybe at this point he's like, well, I got to play the role because maybe this is going to be exposed. Maybe. Okay, so he's going to sit like this for a little bit. I think given the circumstances, that's highly appropriate. But again, I don't know your wife. I was hoping to gain some insight from you, but I don't necessarily know that that's something you wanted to. I trust her. A road you wanted to travel down with me, so. It's not without legal representation. Yeah, all right, I get it. But I love my wife, and I trust my wife. And so, I mean, this feels like getting run over by a steam truck while you're sharing with me today. Yeah, okay, so. I think he has a more stronger tie with his wife than he does with his kids. We'll get to the jailhouse calls, but like right then and there, he said, I love my wife. What about your kids, Kevin? <laughs> it's like, I love my wife. I trust her. What you're sharing right now, it feels like there's a steam truck running over me. It's like, oh, God. I don't know. I mean, I would expect this. To be like, I don't think he was abused by Ruby. I don't think so. But you know how sometimes there are those codependent relationship where one is being clearly abused by the other and they have this like really weird emotional connection tie with them. I don't know. I mean, maybe Ruby was abusing him. We don't know. But the way that he's acting, it's like, oh, I love my wife. It's like, what the fuck? What about the kids? But I don't know. I don't, I don't know if she was or not, um, but the way that he's acting, it, it's like as if it's someone who's like really codependent on their abuser, but I mean, not really, because, you know, they haven't been together for 18 months. Possibly. I think given the circumstances, that's highly appropriate, but again, I don't know your wife. I was hoping to gain some insight from you, but... I don't necessarily know that that's something you wanted to. I trust her. A road you wanted to travel down with me, so. And not without legal representation. Yeah, no, I, I get it. But I love my wife, and I trust my wife. And so, I mean, this feels like getting run over by a steam truck while you're sharing with me today. Yeah, you, I can tell you're caught off guard. I thought I was just coming here to pick up my kids, and for what, I don't know what or why, but. And I was fine, I'm taking them back with me. And just... I mean, I'd love to have a candid conversation with you. I just don't know how it's going to be received by you. I don't know you, but I can tell you my perception of how this happened. Uh, well... I'm what interested you in... Comments? Look, I'm interested in facts, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm... I'm, I'm interested in all the facts. But you understand our facts. Our facts are that you have a child that is emaciated malnutrition. I don't know, man. It doesn't seem like he really cares about the facts. He just wants to hear the facts coming from Ruby's fucking mouth. And, ha and has marks. I, I didn't spend any time with her. Sergeant Tobler did. Did any of you spend time with her? Uh, I, I have not. She went to. She was requested to go to the hospital along with Russell, based on their condition. Because I feel like he's still trying to give Ruby Frankie the benefit of the doubt. But I mean, your kids are being taken to the hospital. To the hospital. You can maybe not believe law enforcement, but you know, why would your kids be taken to the hospital if their conditions was not severe? Folks, I don't know what to do. Like, I want to... S you realize that I have a picture of my family on my wall. And I look at it every day. And I work. I work. 
every day. So I can get back to my family and save my family. And everything you're sharing to me just sounds like a made up story. Like I I have no idea what you're talking about. Like it's just it sounds like a horror movie. Like we are hearing a lot of me, 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 me. I want this. I want that. Um, it's a shame that he's not talking about how his kids are feeling, how the kids are doing and how they must be traumatized by this. Probably because he doesn't believe law enforcement. Uh, he probably doesn't believe that Ruby Frank would ever do this. He could be in denial right now. Like if I'm going to play devil's advocate, he could be in denial right now from his perspective. You know, he was shamed for how he treated Ruby because he had an addiction to corn what to say corn he had an addiction and that in order for him to work for his on his addiction he listened to a highly respected therapist where he had to be separate from the kids for 18 plus months and he was working hard on himself for the past you know year and a half and then now he's blindsided by all this shit that's happening but ah, oh, i don't it's just like it's so hard for me to have sympathy for him it's really hard. Like, even though I'm like trying to understand from his perspective, it's really hard to have sympathy for him because like right now we're still just hearing me, 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 me. I work so hard. I want to have this. I want to have my kids back. I want to, I don't know. I just don't really hear you talking about your kids. Really? Um, at least with, <laughs> let's talk about this person for a second. At least with Wendy Adelson, she was able to fake it and say they're like, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, my kids are going to be so hurt without their daddy. They're going to grow up without their daddy. Like, how am I going to tell my kids this? Oh my God, they must be so sad, scared little boys, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, it's really hard for us to have sympathy for this man right here. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. Right. And he said that like, oh, I love my wife. It's like, <laughs> okay, Kevin. These things that you described happen. I, I don't know. I think his duty to Ruby Frankie is way stronger than his duty to his kids. It's almost like, I want to say, I I'm sorry, y you must have somebody else because. I do have a question though. Um, do, do Mormons just typically have, I don't know, like a mistrust of like authority figures, like law enforcement? Because I kind of sense that with, I don't know if they're just trying to like fake it, but I sense it with him a little bit, like a distrust of the police. Um, I sense it with Ruby and Jody. I don't know if that's like a culture like within Mormonism or if it's just like a little, if it's just like within like their branch or something like that. Oh, uh, like they're just outsiders in general. It's like, am, am I in the right conference room here? Yeah. That's what I it's like. It's reality, you know. I have a hard time accepting this and dealing with this. I mean, you're telling me that you're taking my kids from me. But I'm I'm like, we need to transfer the titles of the car to my name, you know, or 
um, we're going to cancel these credit cards and, and stuff like that. So just stuff related to the finances really is the, our, our only communications over the past year. Sure. We've, we've had zero, like zero communications regarding the kids. Okay. I've had no reason to believe or think that there was anything going on. For all intents and purposes, I woke up this morning looking at the picture of my family and making my commitment today, as I do every day, that I'm going to live an honest, a virtuous, and a responsible life today. And what you're sharing with me just feels like a sucker punch. Just imagine. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to have sympathy. Like I said, you haven't had contact with your kids in like 18 months. You haven't checked with them. We have technology nowadays. It's not like, you know, it's not like, <laughs> what, what's the other, um, the other group where they don't use like technology and stuff like that? Oh my gosh, I actually have a funny story about that. Um, there was like some, oh, what happened? There was like an Amber Alert that went off or something uh, within the past year. And a lot of people, oh, Amish, yes, there were, there was an Amber Alert or something went off where you can't silence it no matter what. And apparently it went off and within the Amish community, there were some of their members there that had telephones when you're not supposed to and they got in trouble for it. I just remember hearing about it. Okay. It's not like they're Amish and he didn't have access to technology or anything like that. Like nowadays you can do like cell phone calls, right? You can do FaceTimes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. If I still have a family, yeah. And um, I, I just um, I, I don't know what my plan. How my plan is to go to God. Sure. And to figure this out. Right. And, um, I am just heartbroken with what you all are sharing with me. And um, I just, I feel like, I feel responsible. Oh, there you go. Finally, something that I can agree with. Separating, leaving. Hi, Stevie. It hurts. And the, uh, jobs and I know you all have the best interests of the kids in mind yeah. I appreciate that thank you thanks that means a lot I just want my kids back I want my family back I want my wife back you still want your wife back after all this I've seen a doc about an Amish family. They had lights they can turn on and off by clapping. What the fuck? I don't have that. Uh, excuse me. You don't remember the 90s infomercials? The clap on, clap off? <laughs> remember? And then the lights would clap on, clap off. I don't, it was like so crazy. Um, I don't think they have that anymore, though, because you can just verbally set up your Alexa or your, Siri, or your Alexa, I think, right? With your smart lights. Why would you want her back? 
Oh, it gets worse with the jailhouse calls, guys. It gets worse. Yeah, if you were in the 90s and you didn't have to clap, you weren't cool. I want this to sound rude, Kevin. We've got some things to do, but we're not kicking you out. But the building's closed. Okay. <laughs> Did the investigator say Kevin? <laughs> You're going to be okay driving home? I really am worried about you. Okay. Do, do your best. Breathe. Got to pull over the side of the road. Oh, I think I was thinking about wax on, wax off. Do you drink Red Bulls? Do you want your water to go, Ken? No, red blinking. Red, red, red bulls the... are disgusting. Oh, okay, this is a random video. Um, all right, let's get to the journals. Let's get to the journals, and then let's get to the jailhouse calls. There is a YouTube channel that uploaded them. I still can't get access to the evidence. Um, if you guys are wondering, Utah posted all the evidence. Um, if you guys want to go through them yourselves, feel free. But I haven't been able to download them yet because their site keeps crashing. Let's see if I can try it again. I tried downloading it. There's like a zip file that's about, uh, I don't know, how many gigabytes? I don't know, I couldn't download it. I love Red Bulls. Red Bulls remind me of like Red Bull Vodkas back in the clubbing days and bleh. No, mm-mm, mm-mm. They were not good. I don't think Mr. Miyagi did clap on my fall. He might, you never, you never know. You never know. Oh, wait, wait, the website, hold on. Wait, the website might be working actually. Um, audio, Ooh, documents, photos, oh snap, hold on, I think I'm getting in. I was trying to download all the files, but, um, I don't want to fuck it up. Oh my god, wait a second, is it working? Oh, it might be, oh my god, no, oh my god. Mm. There's some sad stuff on here. Um, uh, Jesus. Let's see if I can download all of them. Oh, the website might be working. Actually, guys, let me download my files first. Don't go on there. Don't flood the website. <laughs> all right, well, let's see if it works, I guess. Because uh, I have not gone through all of these yet. <clears throat> all right, y'all. Let's start with the, um, the journal entries. So I believe these are journal entries of Ruby Frankie. I mean, imagine. <laughs> there are dates on here. There are entries documenting what they were doing. It's so wild that they did this. It's so crazy. I want to put my glasses on. Like I said, y'all, if, uh, if you guys had a rough week, you know, maybe you want to put this off. Or if you want to go to the weekend with some good vibes, good spirits, maybe you want to put, up, put off this video until next Monday or something, you know? But we're going to go through the, the journal entries. And I think this is how investigators had such, much, such details about what went on with the kids. Um, initially, I thought maybe the kids were talking. Maybe the kids were, you know, giving information to law enforcement. But a lot of the evidence seems to be in these journals. And I remember, and I wonder if Jody was like, fuck, I can't believe that bitch documented everything. It's crazy. Did she start the entries with Dear Diary? No, but there is something called a timeline on here, which it's almost as if she was trying to self-snitch on herself. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of redactions in here, and I'm assuming it's probably because there's personal shit that has nothing to do with the case, maybe. Did they evidence their own crimes? Uh, listen, guys. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, the downloads are working. Wait, did it download? Oh, it's downloading. Okay, cool. All right, so we got timeline. May 21st, 2023. Jody receives blessing from Temple President Steve Kaplan. Steve, where are you at? May 22nd. Ruby, name of the children, A-J-R-E, comes down to Jody's to help spring clean. Now, that seems to be a very common theme with these people, using your children to help clean. I remember with Pam Botchner, two of the kids were with her because Pam was like, you know what? I have people that are coming over. Send your kids over. They can help me clean the house. <laughs> May 28th, meet Jeremy Juggy. Don't know who that is. June 6th, June 13th, Jody goes to SLC, 
Um, is that a name of the church? To meet with Jeremy Jaggy and Brad Wilcox. You guys want to Google those people? Dear Future Consequences. R, that's one of the children, refuses to do lawsuits. He says he is done. That was June 30th. July 1st. R is to stay outside. Sleep outside. This is July. I'm assuming it's going to be really hot during July and nighttime too. Only comes to the bathroom and shower. July 14, E, the girl, refuses to work, screams, has hair shaved off. Who, who does this? So law enforcement, when they went over to ransack Jody's house, they found one of the children hiding in the closet floor, just sitting there hiding. She wouldn't come out for four hours, four hours. They had to lure her out. They had to give her some pizza and then finally get her to trust them that she can leave. At first, when they saw her, they thought she was a little boy because they shaved her fucking head off. Like, who, who does that? What is a wall sit? Um, imagine you're sitting in a chair, but you're leaning against the wall. That's my understanding of what a wall sit is. Russell, or R, runs away around 1.15 a.m. Ruby finds him at 3.14 a.m. Wait, is she... Hold on a second. Is she talking about herself in third person? Jody, E, and J arrive, sorry, drive to Arizona and find property. Land, exclamation mark. A bunch of redactions. July 9, Sunday. R turns 12 tomorrow. I never envisioned him being 12 and still pooping slash peeing himself. Jeez. If your child is 12 years old and still is wetting themselves or whatever, maybe it's you. Satanic choices lead one to become destitute, even in the most affluential homes. July 10, on a Monday, it's R's birthday. He doesn't even know what month it is. E and R have been in so much deviant behavior, they won't control their bodily functions. They are both fearers. What the fuck does that say? They are both fear, fearers, their selfish, sinful lifestyle, and it's being intervened upon. I told R he emulates a snake. You, tell, you told a 12 year old this? He slithers and sneaks around looking for opportunities when no one is watching. Then he scurries. If he wants to emulate the savior, he needs to be 100% obedient with exactness. No wavering, no hiding. R, lies, I mean all the time. Because he's probably scared of you guys. He is a compulsive liar. I would never have suspected this the entire experience. The shock to my system. I would have suspected the cold, dead heart R has. Did it? Nowhere to look. He has always been able to get what he wants, and now he can't. He is furious. Oh, furious. Okay. I was like, what is that word? Thank you. Yeah, these two nut jobs were obsessed. I told them if he is divulge everything, I told him if he divulge everything, he would automatically begin repenting. I asked if there was, it's all been redacted. I told R that he needs God. I invited him to fast and pray. R is in and out of possession. He is workable and calm. Oh my God, this is so sad. He is workable for a bit and then angry and defiant the next. The only consistent thing about R is that he lies. E is better behaved with Jody. She likes to think she can still manipulate me. Oh my God. How old is E at this time? E was one, was E one year younger than R? I gave her a pixie haircut. All her long hair is gone. No more distracting with hair. R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as his, as his mom. He was probably really thirsty. I mean, 
he was emaciated. He probably was like thirsty as heck. They were leaving outside. I wouldn't be surprised if he said he'd rather have a glass of water than having her as his mom. July 30, uh, July 11. Big day for evil. E manipulates me. She won't scream when Jody's around, but with me, she wails all night. E screamed and cried and would hit her head on the tile floor. Today, Jody confronted her. E admits to putting on a show for her mother. E says, I wonder if she actually admitted that or if they put words in her mouth. Like, what kind of child says, oh, hey, I was just putting a show for my mom. E says she wants to be pitiful. Yeah, I wonder if words are being put in their kids' mouths. R was told to stand in the sun with his sun hat. He is defiant. No. I tell him a couple more times. R or I should say his demon stays in the shade. I push R into the sun. R comes back. I come back with a cactus poker. When I poke his back to get in the sun, R doesn't even flinch. I poke him on the neck. He is in a trance and doesn't appear to feel anything. Jody taps him on the cheeks to wake him up. The devil doesn't like when you get your subject to agree to truth. R, do you know I love you? Yes, ma'am. R, do you know... I don't know what that says. G. Joe loves you? I don't know what that is. Yes, ma'am. Do you know the Savior loves you? Yes, ma'am. R wants out of his outcomes. After our talk, R stays in the shade. I take my old mop water and go to R. I show R the water. Then I pour the water on R. It's hot outside. It feels good, doesn't it? He says yes. Your old mop water? Oh my god, this shit is like fucking crazy. An hour later... G. Joe. Is that supposed to be Jody? Well, I, don't, I don't know what this is. An hour later, G. Joe takes R on a... On a little walk to the pool. She talks on how... R has love twisted. If R likes something, someone, does he calls it love? If he doesn't, he thinks it's not loving. G. Joe then push R into the pool. R swam to the side. G. Joe pulled him out. Feel good? Refreshing? Yes, ma'am. G. Joe equals R. Guardian Jody? I don't know. I'm assuming it's Jody. I went out a couple of hours later and asked if he wanted the pool again. Yes, ma'am. Will you let me push you in? R laugh. Then try not to act too excited. R cooled off and went back to his spot. I put my hands on his face. R, have you ever heard someone talk underwater? Yes, ma'am. I know R is in there somewhere. I know deep down under all this anger, you can hear me. It may sound like I'm underwater with you, but hear me. I love you. Ugh, some really weird manipulation shit. R got teary. Then I put my hand tightly over his nose and mouth. I am coming for you in this water and putting my hands on your nose slash mouth. The devil lies and says, I'm hurting you, abusing you. <laughs> so she knows abuse. But R, what am I really doing? You are putting oxygen on me to help me breathe. Yes, that's right. R looked like he wanted to beat me up this morning, and then he was intrigued and interested. And then two hours later, he drinks water from the house. He steals water. This is so fucking batshit crazy. R is compulsive. He feels no remorse for his choices. He shuts down and says he wants to go to jail. Oh, um, I think um, when he goes to the neighbor's house, there's like a ring doorbell. So he initially goes to the neighbor's house and he tells the neighbors to take him to jail. Something like that. And the neighbors were really confused. Um, he was like, can you point me to the direction? And the neighbor was like, oh, why? Why? And he's like, oh, it's personal business. I don't know if she was drowning them, but she was pushing them into the pool and throwing mob water on them. R says he worships the devil and has no interest in changing. 
I want the outcome of being changed, but I don't want to do the work that it requires. R doesn't actually know what jail means. He has no comprehension what throwing your life away means. He just wants the immediate gratification of sitting in an air-conditioned car ride to juvie. He wants stimulus. <laughs> Dude, Ruby is... Okay, I'm sorry. She's so demented. Do not let her out. R is so back and forth. R stole water. He was so angry and looked like he wanted to fist up. I put my hands on his shoulders and told him I love him. Oh my God, this manipulation is crazy. I told him he has no idea what he is doing, but I do. I can help him. I told him, give me your demon friend a message for me. I will not rest. I will not stop. I will not leave. I will fight him until the day you die. I have the power of God and he must obey. I beat Satan. I win. Then I looked in R's eyes and with power and authority commanded, get out now, go. R immediately smiled, cried, slumped, Satan. He's gone. He's left. I took ENR on a car drive to the something gas station. I told E she, is never going, she was never going home. I showed her pictures of her on the swing under the big tree she saw a girl who was hiding who enjoyed tricks i told her i saw a daughter of god and with divine worth. e manipulated during the car drive r appeared to soften wait so is she admitting to manipulating her kids and that she's like patting herself on the back for manipulating one of the kids oh my god i need lip chop Listen, if there was anyone that was possessed, it was Ruby and it was Jody, okay? They possessed each other. I don't know. It says E manipulated during the car drive. R appeared to soften. I feel like she's like saying that like she, man she was able to manipulate the daughter. I don't know. I stopped the car and we all got off to view the sunset. I told E she needs to stop her fantasy. She is not innocent. Who tells kids this? She can't be innocent through repentance. Don't waste more time. R and E have been counting days. R something knows yesterday was his birthday. Oh. E told me she figures they had been here eight weeks. I asked E if she felt like she had made progress over the eight weeks. Yes, exclamation mark. I told her she was delusional. She has made no progress. She continues to lie and manipulate. Last night, her screaming and trance head banging were evidence of no change. July 12. When were the kids found again? Uh, was it in August? Took the kids on a four-hour car ride. We stopped at Gunlock Lake, and I shared my love for them. We watched a baby cow get loose and walk into the road in front of us. I made an analogy of the not-so-wise calf to them. I was keeping them safe when they want to when they want to run in the road. We drove up to maybe Vegas. I bought a volcano pie. I told the kids the pie was to thank G. Joe for her home care and time oh so she didn't buy the kit pie for the kids she bought it for jody r appeared in rage e was manipulative oh manipulative this is the day e anticipates breaking her two-day fast what they were making these kids do a fast a two-day fast when we get home to g joe I let R know she has heart in her heart and would do one more day of fasting to invite her to humble. E flips out and begins ranting. She refuses to give up. She lies on the floor all day speaking dishonest chants because G. Joe is on the phone with clients. I don't go in and match her level of aggression. All day, E makes rhythms above. My mom starves me, calls it fasting. Oh my God, I'm so glad these kids are smart. My mom won't lift two fingers and bring me food because all she does is lie on the bed and eat brownies. So you're telling me this fucking bitch was eating brownies, laying on her bed while her kids were starving, fasting? My mom says she is the most loving mom in the world, blah, blah, blah. 
If I can't ever go home, then what's the point in being obedient? I'm going to run away. Did you help me intervene after work? Pattern in a box, allowing lies to be spread, spewed, gives the devil a platform. Articulating lies reinforces possession. The longer the lies are allowed to be spewed, the larger the intervention or longer and physical the intervention needs to be. I wonder, I really do wonder, I don't know. She's blaming it all on Jody. I, I, don't, I don't think I buy it anymore. That was all Jody. I think Ruby was just batshit fucking crazy. Oh my God. I hope, I hope both women get the same amount of sentencing time. They were both, um, we're still waiting on like what exact number they're getting, right? Jesus. I cut more of E's hair. Oh, I cut, I cut more off E head. We doused her with water in the dog wash. E said she wanted to run away. Jody told E she has no idea what she's, what is waiting for her. This is all redacted. July 13. I may have forgotten to write this. On the 11th, I took our face in my hands and spoke to him. Through redacted, love you. I told him to send the demon a message for me. I will not give up. I will not leave. I am going nowhere. Get out. R released the demon and he's been very workable ever since. This morning, the 13th, R broke his fast with brown rice, lentils, black beans, and chicken and water. A hornet kept buzzing around his chicken. I told R to think of the hornet as Satan. Oh my God, this is so delusional. Would you become pals with Satan? Would you sell your soul or chicken to a hornet? He will sting you in the end. R trapped the bee with his sun hat. E broke her fast with cheesy potatoes, steak, water, oatmeal, and water. It's so crazy how they're like listing water. So like you're telling me like you're breaking your fast if you drink water so they could even drink water. Oh, bye, Wayne. Have a good night. Take care. R is full of piss and vinegar. She is mad as a hornet and she doesn't call the shots. It's about 90 minutes since R ate. I warn him that the food would either energize him to truth or defiance. He is defiant again. He pooped his pants and telling me no. His poop is too watery to be fasting. Redacted admits, R admits to stealing water three times yesterday. R lies, feels no remorse. E is cheating. The selfish, selfish children who desire only to fake, lie, and attack have zero understanding of God's love for them. They don't know G. Joe is selling her home, this priceless snow canyon gem, so she can purchase land where these two can work. Oh my God. So you're telling me she's trying to sell her $5 million mansion, buy some land, and then make these two very young kids work on the property? D. Joe has been looking for property with Soros Cactus and is feeling more imminent the need to get these kids to open land. She's willing to consider less than ideal property for them. This is a spiritual matter. I can't in good faith leave you with these two gremlins. I won't do that. These are God's children. Soros don't matter when souls are on the line. One hour later, we move quickly. Jody, Jay are going on a road trip to look at property in Arizona. Ruby has some cash in the bank. If the property is right, we can move on financing immediately. We decided the escalation of the kids is not manageable here. And now. R is now sitting slash angry slash defiant. E is lying on the floor. We will bring them in. R, I will clean up out in the desert as he has pooped himself. He will then stand and sit on the patio slash shaded. Now I'll see him from the kitchen. E, I will bring him to the cool house. She can sit in the pantry. Oh my God. They will think they won. They will think they got what they wanted. They will relax. Then pop. We will drop them like hot potatoes out in the desert. Their new home. Exclamation mark. Quotations. You are going to get exactly what you asked for. Oppositional force is required for growth, development, maturity. E and R have never experienced oppositional force. They are very weak-minded. Oh, why is this upside down? 
Oh my god, what is this? This is gonna be like a rant. Oh god, this is gonna be a rant, guys. Get ready. Pattern. Sending evil away in a long time possessed person is not one and done deal usually. These wicked spirits in ENR have been pals long before this life. How ENR got to come and get a body cam, get a body can only be explained in me advocating to be their mother. Oh, Jesus. This is not a conceited statement. Wait, so you're saying that, so she says that the reason why E and R are born is because she advocated to be their mom and that's why God gave them life. Oh my God. This is not a conceited statement. God knew I would take my responsibility to mother seriously. Jody volunteered to help. These two souls are very weak of mine. They are fools, truly. E said she would choose the devil over God. What arrogant spew. God is patient not to split her with a bolt of lightning. You do not tempt a God who controls your very breath. The disdain and hatred they have for God is beyond my ability to describe. My spirit is offended. I shudder to think I would never have seen this had I not pushed on them. Holding principles in a box. Boundaries will show you how much possession a soul has the more boundaries the more soul will reveal itself trial will reveal a soul because of the inherent limits built into a tribulation oh my lord holy shit back to sending evil away i wonder if they were projecting hear me out like i know people were theorizing about jody and ruby being in a relationship um what if they were in a relationship and what if they felt terrible for being in this relationship, but they were using the children as a way to work together and be in the same room, living in the same household or the fuck. What if they were just projecting the evil when really they thought themselves were evil? Like, I don't know. That's, that's my conspiracy land theory for the day. Back to sending evil away, articulating truth drives evil away. This is a powerful invention, intervention for the possessed. Even if you can start by agreeing to something, truthful. E, you are a daughter of God. True? Yes, ma'am. Principle in a box. Following up on articulating a desire for evil to leave with a demonstration of obedience is powerful. Demonstrating a willingness to follow truth is a pattern. Like, what the fuck happened? How did her mind get so fucking fried? Or was it always like this behind closed doors? The savior using the interactions, go sell all you have and follow me. Go, sin no more. Go wash seven times. Go tell no one. Go and tell the city. Go and preach my gospel. Go feed my sheep. If you can engage a weak-minded soul in a physical activity of obedience, you can begin to break the bond Satan made with the weak. Physically stop the acting out behaviors, begin physically doing good, farm work, lifting boxes, extorting energy, exercises, jump rope, milking cows, weeding a garden, digging trenches. Satan cannot be where there is good. Begin doing slash sweating for good. Heavy physical intensity capture attention. Is this why they make the children do such physical labors and make them clean and do chores? Because if you're sweating, that means you're doing something good. <laughs> oh, God. The problem for ENR is the hard labor is all, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what happened here. For the sake of lifting does not have meaning. Is that like something like devil writing or something like that? Oh my God. I don't know what the fuck that is. We need property where a ranch can be built. Good can be done. Outcomes of prosperous choices can be experienced and felt. And the kids need a good kick from a horse and a cactus to run into. They need natural outcomes. Oh my God. I asked R why slash crossed out what he was thinking about since he was sitting in the shade and he had what he wanted. R answered what I want. Me, what do you want? R, more different foods and a soft bed. Me, why don't you ask Satan? Do you think Satan will give you those things? R, no. Me, why not? R, because he doesn't have the power. Me, why would you serve a God who has no power to give you your desires? Dumb. R, silent. Oh my God, dude, this is so crazy. Redacted had another episode with demons. She gives herself to them. She agreed to stop being deceptive with her facial expressions and crying and whining. Whining is a devil's voice. Whining is always a demon. 
Redacted hurt facial expressions blame E for her misery. It is E at the center of her misery. Her face is deceptive. After E did stares, she sat on the park bench looking at the mountain views. She was told to sit and be still and eat her dinner. Carrot, hummus, grilled cheese, water. E in a power plate brought her empty plate to the door and then moved her sun hat. Removed her sun hat. July 14. E woke up. Yeah, they made their kids run up and down the stairs, I think, while carrying heavy objects. E woke up. I reminded her that if she whined, cried, or squinted her eyes at me or soured her face, I would be buzzing her hair. If she's going to act sick, she can look sick. She agreed with a smile. I told her because she didn't listen the night before. She would do two sets of boxes slash stairs with a five-minute break. She did the first set easy and agreeable. After five minutes of rest, she begged, whimpered. When she got to the bottom stair, she slipped and dropped. Oh, my goodness. She wrote slip in quotations marks. So she thinks the daughter's manipulating her and slipped on purpose so she would get out of this, I guess. She slipped and dropped the box. I put her in the dog wash and shaved her head. Then back to the boxes. I told E. E, yes, ma'am, with tears. Me, it's heavier. The boxes, right? E, yes, ma'am. Me. I can help you find relief. You have told so many lies about me that you refuse to be obedient. Why do you keep being buddies with Satan? E, I don't want to work. Me, don't you see it's because you follow Satan that you keep doing boxes? If you were humble, you would be inside making pancakes with Jody and me. Or Julie? Is this Julie? E, agreed to sit on the park bench and think about her choices. I made it very clear if she were to move, get up, fidget, talk, take her hat off, she would go back to work. Redacted agreed eagerly. She promised to be obedient. After an hour on the bench, she began moving and looking around. I pulled her into the house and gave her more boxes. Now to R. The, the fact that she's dialoguing this out is fucking wild. It is crazy. This woman is so fucking delusional. And I don't believe a word that she says now during the sentencing. There's no way she became unbrainwashed. She probably just thinks like, hey, I'm just going to tell them what they want. I'm going to pretend like I'm sorry. I'm going to pretend like I know that this was all wrong. I don't, I don't buy it. I think Ruby might just be a really fucking good manipulator. Oh, my Lord. Hey, Dominique. Good morning. How are you doing today? Oh, Julie's her sister. So her sister is a sick fuck too. Oh, wait. I think I do remember. Holy shit. Because I think they mentioned that Kevin was not in these journal entries. That's why they don't believe that Kevin was involved. So you're saying the sister Julie was there. Oof. Isn't... Is Julie one of the sisters that was doing like updates, making like YouTube videos about this? I don't know. She has like, oh, she has a daughter named Julie too. Julie did a video on her YouTube. Julie's her daughter. Please not the sister that has custody. Because uh, <laughs> I know that she has family members, like she has sisters that also do the whole fucking YouTube family shit. Okay. Um, when this whole thing came out, a lot of them like felt the need to come out and do like a press conference or something. They did like an Instagram post. They made like YouTube videos about it. I was like, oh my God, this is so weird. Julie is the daughter. Bonnie is the sister. Julie is Ruby's daughter. Oh, oh, okay. 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 One of the teen daughters then. Because I remember there are also two teen daughters that are in the middle, right? There's like the two oldest. There's Chad. There's Sherry. Two teen daughters. I guess one of them's name is Julie. And then there's E and R, the two youngest one. That might be a yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I, I didn't watch Eight Passengers back in the day. Um... So I only heard of them when the whole lunch fiasco thing happened. She was the one with Pam. Okay. Okay. I was like, oh my God, hold on a second. Because I remember the sisters were very adamant about not knowing what happened. They were saying they were cut off. Um, they said that Ruby went on the deep end. Okay. 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 
Now to R, me. You like sleeping on the hard ground? I slept in a soft bed. Oh my gosh, she was... (laughs) Why was she, like, this is just a cruel, cruel person rubbing it in into her children's faces. You like sleeping on the hard ground? Well, I slept on a nice soft bed. That's so fun. Like, what is wrong with you? R, I slept really well. Me, you are mean. Do you enjoy being mean? Wait, so he's mean because he said he slept well? You're hoping for him to be like, oh, yeah, sleep on the ground really sucks, mom. I, I don't know. She, she's got an ego. You are mean. Do you enjoy being mean? Yes, ma'am. Do you expect me to feed you? Yes. Also, we can't really trust the dialogue verbatim. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of fillers here. I'm sure the kid probably said other things as well. It's not just like, do you enjoy being mean? Yes. I'm sure there was so much more that went into it. And that's, we're only hearing what, we're only seeing what Ruby heard. Okay. Yeah, she's a fucking psycho. Me. I got big over him so that means she towered over him and threatened him physically with her body i will feed r i will not feed a demon so i would check on you in a bit and if you want food then be prepared to tell the truth about your behaviors tell the truth of who i am an hour later me you ready r no ma'am me so you would rather have no food and worship the devil r yes ma'am E, does first set of books decently, 10 minute break. E, upset to do boxes. Gets them done. Sits on a park bench, one minute, then picks G. Joe's blossom off plant, defiant. More boxes. She refuses, goes to sleep on basement floor. R, stand up, stop picking your nose. The kids both pick their noses until they bleed. Distraction. Me, you happy? R, no. Me, following Satan doesn't make you happy? Shocker. So Satan can't feed you? Who is supposed to feed you? R, God. And R, Christ. Me, this is a game you're playing. Who brings you food? You. Me, you want to leave the demons? R, I don't want to humble. I told Redacted I wanted to give him dinner with chicken. He needs to acknowledge his behaviors. He tells me he is missing his opportunity to repent. This is not acknowledging his behaviors. Oh my God, dude, if the kid... If one of the children never escaped and ran to a neighbor, they would have died at some point. This is ridiculous. They would have for sure died at some point because we knew Kevin Frankie was going to intervene. We know Jody was probably just batshit crazy. This is wild. I feel like she almost enjoys this power, this authority, this righteousness. I feel like she enjoyed it so much she was documenting it. And as she was writing this, she was probably lamenting it all over again. Wait, not lamenting. What's uh what's what I'm looking for? Lamenting is like sad, right? Um yeah, lamenting is sad. She was probably um shit, I had the word in my head for a second there. What is it called again when you're kind of like reliving everything all over again? She needs to sell with Lori Vallow. Oh my god, yeah, they're both horrible. Reveling, maybe reveling. (laughs) Reminiscing. I told Redacted, I want to give him dinner with chicken. He needs to acknowledge his behaviors. He told me he is missing his opportunity to repent. This is not acknowledging his behavior. I tell R, he is treating me and G. Joe the way he believes he deserves to be treated. A bunch of redactions. I bring him dinner of brown rice, beans, lentils, and water. He takes the bowl and begins eating. I say, no, thank you. Are you going to acknowledge the woman you've been abusing? (laughs) Oh, no. She thinks she's the one who's being abused in this relationship. How fucking delusional relishing okay relishing that's the word i was looking for too relishing reveling she literally says this to her son are you going to acknowledge the woman you've been abusing just brought you food well the kid probably didn't have time to say thank you because he was probably so hungry (laughs) this is unbelievable or well i would say thank you but i wouldn't really mean it yeah because he probably thinks that he's entitled to fucking eat With that, I reached down and grabbed his dinner and water and said, wow, wow. R tried going back on what he said with some explanation, and I stopped him. Quotations. 
I would not talk with a demon. Your soul is damned. I would not hear your damnable words. Straight to bed. E has started walking stairs with out a box. She's now slipping and falling on purpose. While E was outside today, remember, these kids are, fu- they're probably fucking hungry. They probably don't have the fucking energy, the calories to burn to do, to do these fucking tasks. So I, no, I don't believe that she's like slipping and falling on purpose. She probably just doesn't have the energy to do all this fucking shit. When E was outside today and it was hot, she acted like she was dying. So pitiful. I told her, E, the heat in hell is so much hotter and God is going to burn the wicked. So either you get used to it or start changing. I really don't believe, sorry, E, I really don't believe that's actually going to happen. It's actually crazy to me that the children are way smarter than these fucking adults. Kids are all in bed. E ate mashed potatoes and turkey and milk. G. Joe. J are looking at RV trailers. These kids have no idea the sacrifice is being made for them or Jesus' sacrifice already made. July 15, Saturday. There are days and nights that reveal God's most poignant miracles, oh, mercies and miracles. Last night, God gave me a miracle I absolutely would never, ever forget. I know when God gives you an errand. You know what? I wonder if she's still journaling in prison because I, she, she must be journaling in prison. She must be. This must be an outlet for her. Oh God, I wish we could get a hand, a hold of those. I don't, I don't think she's sorry. She's probably in the journal writing about how she's tricked everyone and well, we're all fucking idiots and how her and Jody were just doing the God's work. I know when God gives you an errand, you do the best you can to fulfill it. He will protect you. I went to bed around 12, 10 a.m. E on the floor next to my bed or on the patio outside my sliding glass window. Oh man, just writing this, I am shaking. Shaking if Pam, oh Pam, that's the president, right? Shaking if Pam hadn't intervened to take A, that's one of the children, to American Fork for her ALT. Tess, then I would not have been here. And my life and Jody's and my family's forever would be different. So Pam must be the one that introduced Jody and Ruby, I guess. And she's basically saying like, oh my God, thank goodness. If it wasn't for Pam, I would never have known Jody. Our families would not be doing this right now. At 2.45 a.m., I woke straight up out of bed, straight up. I couldn't see R. He was gone. I spent this, I, something, the sliding glass door and there was no sight of him. He, de- he did leave an arrangement of rocks in letters and words. He wrote me a message. Too scared, I forgot how to read. I run to Jody's room and woke her up. She came out with me. The message said in pebbles, jail. I will call when I get there. Oh my God. He, he believed the shit that his parents were feeding him or sorry, that his mom was feeding him, that Jody was feeding him. And he was just going to send himself to jail because you know what? Being in jail is probably better than dealing with these two fucking women. I will call when I get there. Jay and I scoured the house and yard. Jody got flashlights. Jody and Jay took her car and I got redacted up and went in the mine. Oh God. Oh father. We need a miracle. We need your help now. Send the host of heavens. Show us where Redacted is. Wait, did she write this before she went out to go look for her children? It kind of sounds like it, right? It seems like instead of going out there and finding her children immediately, she decided to write this fucking journal entry. Right? Uh, okay, hold on a second. Maybe not. Please, please, Father, answer how I... How... Please, please, Father, answer now. I've done everything you've asked. Protect me. Protect Jody. <laughs> Something is up with her and Jody. Protect us. Protect us. I heard in my head, go right. I went left and all the way to the roundabout on the main street to rule it out and make sure he hadn't reached the main road yet. No sign of R. I turned back to go down the dip and then right. Father, 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 hear me now. I go right. Then right again. This road doesn't look familiar. 
I speed up to cover as much road as I can, racing the sun, racing the devil. Then I see R walking on the left side of the road. I call Jody to let her know. I turn the car around and stop. I get out of the car. R is shocked to see me. Get in the car. You shocked to see me? R nods his head and gets in. Redacted in the back, me and R in the front. 2.45, I wake up. 3 a.m., we leave in cars. 3.14 a.m., I call Jody with R. The sun started lighting the roads just an hour and a half later. The devil wants me in prison. My children, dead. I meet Jody back home. We deliberately, we deliberate in the car while J and E go back to bed. Which one is J again? Which one is J? Sorry, was one of the middle, middle children's name beginning with the J? You said it was A, right? Oh, Julie. Okay. R stands at the garage where we can see him. He has zero remorse, zero fear, zero expression. He is cold, callous, and hard. Angry, he isn't calling the shots. Jody and I agree to buy ourselves time until we have more of an environment conducive to an intervention. We need land. Man, they're just trying to isolate themselves even more. Like the place where they were living at was already isolated, but they want to go somewhere where it's completely isolated where their abuse would go unnoticed. That's why they're trying to buy this huge chunk of land. The spirit told Jody very clearly, don't let these kids' choices ruin your life. We have work to do. You can force repentance. To de-escalate the situation, I brought, R, I brought R into the house. I tied a rope to my feet and him, to my waist and his. R would now sleep in a soft bed with me. 7 a.m. R slept. The devil got a bed. Jody taught exaggeration in class. Jay loaded the cooler. I put the kids in my car and took a drive. 8 a.m. A man came to look at Jody's house. 8.30. Jody and I met with the, at the Chewitz gas station. E and Jay, Jody take off to Tucson. I drive back to the house with R. He comes in the house. He doesn't leave my sight. I feed him chicken, rice, lentils, beans, but add a glass of milk. He sits at the counter and eat. He got what he wanted. I give him the book. Theoprastus characters. He gets a pen and his journal. He takes notes. To the onlooker, he appears to be a well-behaved, studious young man, and wouldn't I be thrilled? My son, who wanted to run away, is now by my side, reading and writing. Wouldn't I be relieved? No. I now know that in order to keep my son, I would need to put him back under sedation? I unhooked him from all the bells and whistles and asked him to breathe and thrive on his own, and he went into arrest and stress. Back to sedation we go. The demon is still here, and I purposely put R back into a slumber. Hibernate. To water R, go into the awful state of compliance. Knowing the demon he harpers in his heart is so sick like stitching up a patient knowing you didn't get all the cancer out, and knowing it's only a matter of time before your patient kills over. I don't know what kind of sedation she's talking about. She might just be talking about it metaphorically. I don't know. We would have saw this in the charges, right? Arnie do not want to repent. They hate God per their own behaviors and words. I now see how perfectly reasonable people walk around hating God and worshiping the devil yet appear like good old Joes. Good guys. There is a soul killing infection in my child and my hand is forced to not remove the infection. Agency does not allow me to rid the infection. Arnie like the infection. It is so sick. 8, 18 p.m. Just over 12 hours after fighting R, teaching class and leaving, Jody sends me a text. I found the land. The devil does not want us to take R and E out of society. He did not want Jody finding this property. He wanted Jody and I down at the police station at 8, 18 p.m., not discovering a place to bring intervention to his entanglement of my children. Oh, how good the Lord is to those who risk everything to follow him and bring others to him. The hosts of heavens are now on our side. My children and I would know the sacrifices of lives put on the line to offer a chance for their salvation. R can only think that he likes the taste of milk and reading again. July 16. Uh, we're like halfway, but there's a lot of redactions. So um, I think there's a lot of redactions coming up. Last night, I tied myself to R, full night of sleep, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., no interruptions, R showers while I watch. Oh, that's creepy. I shower while R is in the closet. I can see the closet door as I shower. R eats chicken, rice, beans, lentils with cheese on a corn tortilla. Three sets of 10 push-ups, reads Theoprastus. Does anyone know what this Theoprastus is? It's like some Bible shit or what is this? 
Bye, Mama Jama. Have fun at your birthday party. Happy birthday. Yeah, enjoy yourself. Have a good one. Jody's on the way home. He spent the night. He spent the ride lying down with face facing the back of the seat. She doesn't know where they went or why. One might ask, as I myself have, what if we had taken this slower? Would the children have been on board if we hadn't, if we hadn't boundaried them so quickly and so clearly? What if instead of a full day of box carrying, we would have them do an hour and breaks in reading and then back to boxes? My answer is, well, yes, the kids would have complied, but they would not be repenting and they would not give the impression they were repenting. They need things to get hard fast, intense, shocking, change, immediate discomfort, stress to their systems. Why? Because they divulged their secrets. They could have confessed in truth, taking personal responsibility for the discomfort they were causing. Redacted changed the environment of the kids slowly, more reasonably or comforting. We would have to allow the dumb hypnosis and sleep to stay over the child. We needed to wake the child up to the state of reality, show them where they were really were, the pit of hell. This hope was that they would choose to go to God for forgiveness, to admit their awful state. Instead, they hid. They wanted to lie to themselves that what was done, that what was that what they did wasn't that bad, that they were the victims. They, me, and Jody are the prosecutors. That burning in hell isn't real. That God is, God is that mad and that God doesn't seem to exist. They deny the power of God. I told Art today that he's sedating his choice to do wickedly. I don't want that anymore. My response, yes, you do. You stood alone with only you and your choices. You literally would stand it. You ran away. You refused to sit stand with your choices. And now you are in the house with milk, AC, and a book. And you quite like it, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Me, if you really didn't want evil anymore, you would say, mom, thanks for the book, but I want to do boxes today. Or I want to stand with my choices. You won't do that, will you? No, ma'am. What kid would be like, hey, um, I'd rather do boxes than read a book? R, no, ma'am. Me, see, I want to make it clear to you. You have not made my any shifting or change. You are damning your soul. R goes back to writing, yes, ma'am. Weak-minded, undisciplined brat. Note to myself, I never clearly saw the devil and wickedness until recently because I didn't see evil clearly. I didn't combat him. I paddled Yule and placated wickedness. My love of God was sincere, but assume others' love for God was sincere as well. I was deceived. I, you know what? I'm, I'm really not buying that it's Jody. It's, it's the both of them. It's, it's the both of them. I am not buying that Jody is the one who is pulling the strings here. I... I think it's both. July 23. She can't even write the dates right. She's so delusional. To begin a separation from evil toward God, all the darkness needs exposed to light. And once the lies and sin is revealed, the body must engage in good work. The good works needs to be painful. Otherwise, the service becomes another feel-good distraction. A day of fasting and prayer for me after learning my children has been spawns of Satan. R has been out of control. P, poop, lie, steal, run away. E, crying, wailing. You could not know what this has been like unless you were here. Jody and I took E out of the desert. She refused to stay quiet and would scream and scream. Jody found a reservation cemetery, Chiwit Cemetery. She went out in the heat barefoot. E still tried to run. She screamed for another family, water, food, care, love. Oh, Eve, a manipulative ploy. You are loved. After a couple of hours of screaming and speaking nonsense, E finally lays down in the road quiet we took her home we took e and r out and j the next day e and r barefoot to increase the discomfort and decrease the running away the task at hand was to weed the cemetery huge sage brushes pokies thorns broken glass garbage over full we spent a couple hours filling black bags g joe's truck bed the kids began to mellow out a bit r look for shade and cheating we went out the next day and again today. Five hours of weeding, pooling. Five fucking hours in the desert heat. R finally started getting the hang of it. This is getting easier. I feel I'm getting stronger. I want to pull the weed out of my heart. What am I doing with my life? I don't want to live like this anymore. All children need the experience of pulling obnoxious weeds, sweating in the sun, working while thirsty. 
knowing what doing an anonymous act of service feels like. They are each begging to see how nice the cemetery looks after days of their hard work. Yesterday, R was devious and put his hand in the toilet. He said he was hot and wanted to cool off. Jody and I reflected how disgusting and deviant that is. It is a problem that R has no problem being gross. July 25. 7 to 8.30 a.m. Women's group. Mm, I wonder who was a part of the women's group. How old were the kids? Um, I think one of them had just turned 12. And the other one may have been 10 or 11. Pretty young. 8.30 a.m. Ruby takes E, R, and J to Chiwit's Cemetery. Each child is given a bag to pick up broken glass and weeds. We work for about 15 minutes and a red vehicle with a woman, Indian, shows up. She sits and watches us for about 15 minutes, taking pictures or a video. I tell the kids, oh my gosh, I wonder if there's a footage of that somewhere out there. I tell the kids to stay right by me and keep their faces from being pictured. We continue to pull weeds. The woman gets out of the vehicle and walks towards me. What are you doing here? You don't belong here. This isn't your land. You are trespassing. I tell her I'm weeding. She tells me, how would you feel if I came and poked around your cemetery? What are you stealing? Me, nothing. We are weeding, picking up trash. She wants to know what's in the bags. I say weeds and broken glass. You can see for yourself. She tells me to leave the bags and get off her land. It's not good enough for you that you come and take our land and now you want more what you have isn't good enough you have to come take our cemeteries too what's wrong with you you were not raised right so much disrespectful i again remember this is from her perspective so there's a lot here that she could be convoluting but i feel like the conversation probably went why the fuck are you guys here why are you making your kids do this you guys are out in the sun you're picking up glass you're making them do weeds i told her i do not mean any disrespect i'm honoring your people i'm honoring i'm offering dot 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 she would not let me get any words in i collect my children and walk to the car oh my god i would love to see this interaction she yells at the kid that they will grow up to be just like their mother white and full of privilege Mind your own business. Get out. I'm filing a police report. Wait, who's filing their police report? I tell the kids to get into the car. Oh, wait. Was Ruby trying to fill out a police report? I tell the kids to get into the car. She wants me to wait so she can get a good photo of us. The license plate. I don't think so. We drive off as she stumbles to get her camera app up. This woman is projecting all her anger and aggression onto me. She told me I was walking around acting like I owned the place when that is what she was doing. She wasn't raised right. She was disrespectful. We leave and I talk to ENR about her. This woman was attacking us with her distortion. Mm. A couple days ago, we met a woman, redacted, who thanked us for helping keep the graveyard clean. And now this woman tells us that we are aggressive when really she is the aggressor. I told the kids is exactly what they are doing. I'm helping them and they mock and reject my help. God sent me to help them repent and they turn me away. The kids seem a bit affected because they are so numb. I don't know how long it will hold. R is very unemotional. E, not so much. She is seeing and hearing evil. I told her that she's invited evil. It's her change to now send them away. It's now her charge. You created this, E. The good news is that because you created this, you can now... Destroy this. Send them away. August 1. So we're about a month before the children were finally uh, found. August 1, Tuesday. Jay Jody went to Tucson today to look at property of 500 acres. Oh my God, I'm so glad that they never made the move. E and R are both defined and unwilling to soften. E this week perpetually screamed outside. Jody and I... Accountable, I don't know what that says, her, and took her to the hellhole road. Yes, there is such a road on your way to Las Vegas. She was to run on the dirt road. She ran for a bit and then she started manipulating. I told her to run up an incline on a hillside, touch a tree, and return 100 yards max. She threw herself onto a tree. Jody pulled her out, breaking her flip flops. After an hour of E jumping in bushes, we get in the trunk. We get in the truck to find a cactus. Redacted walked right up to the cactus and threw herself in the middle of it. It was unhuman. She acted like it didn't hurt at all. She cuddled right in. I watched her press her foot up against the cactus ear. 
I watched with my mouth open. She's so numb. After being cozy with the cactus, E got up and spoke with Jody for about 10 minutes. Jody and E walked to the truck and rolled down the windows. E said, may I have permission to speak? Yes. Can I have another chance at running up the hill? Yes. We get in the truck and drive to the hill. E gets out and comes to my window. Mother, what would you like me to do? I instructed her to run to the dead tree and then come back. E replied, I would rather jump into the cactus. What evil, what deception. This girl would choose to be shot and die, to be humble and do what she's told. There's no point to where she will turn. The next day, July 30, Sunday, we put E in the closet and contemplate what to do. She screams much of the day. She doesn't get water if she screams. She refuses to eat. Remember, this is from her perspective, so a lot of this could be bullshit. Um, in the police report, I think they said that it was Jody that forced the kids to jump into the cactus. July 31, Monday. Jody wakes up from a dream. God lets her know we have done everything we can to get E attention. Lord, don't continue these physical interventions. They will only bring resentment. E is great angry about her feet. Dress her wounds and leave her to me. This intervention gives the opportunity for E to soften and see that we aren't hurting her. Jody cleansed her heels. The hydrogen peroxide didn't sting. E is numb to it. The spirit has a very strong the spirit was very strong as Julie and I witnessed Jody cleaning what didn't deserve to be clean. After dressing the wounds, Jody carried her back to the closet. I wonder if this is the closet where they found the child or if this is the, the safe room lock place thing. E did scream and sulk and ask for water. I gave her lunch, leftovers, oh my god, leftovers over several meals she wouldn't eat, and she finally ate. I gave her water and then the scriptures. This is the first opportunity to have her reading material since coming to Jody's. Me, when you see God, he will judge you out of these books. Do you honor your mother? No. Do you keep his commandments? No. Did you repent? No. You are in big trouble. You better get really familiar with what's in here. Our feet are swollen from standing. He's angry. Nobody cares. I told him he's acting like a man having a heart attack and gets his feeling hurt because nobody cares about the sliver in his finger. When your soul is dying, nobody cares about your feet. August 2nd, Wednesday. Jody and Redacted are still away. E is distracted by being in the house, getting socks, being held and carried and out of the elements. She reads her Bible. She ate her beans and rice and chicken. She's quiet. R sat outside yesterday and didn't manipulate. I asked R, why didn't he manipulate yesterday? He said because he wanted to change. I said, no, that's not true. You didn't manipulate because you weren't uncomfortable. You weren't hit. Today, R is standing outside on the patio by the room. It is raining. The rain is doing what? R washing what it touches the rocks. Me, yes, you desecrated these rocks and the rain is cleaning them. Let it clean you too. Redacted pooped himself. He is angry. August 6, 2023. Our rage comes out as he can't have what he wants, which is to serve the devil, aka have the responsibility and have me, mom, tout on him, cuddle him. He wants both. Feed me, hug me, be tender with me. Shower me in the praise and affection and let me lie to you, abuse you. Today, he raged for hours, F you, at least 50 times. I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm not going to change. Take me to jail where I belong. August 7th, Redacted will come start fixing the basement so Jody can sell her home. This is great news. Only R is yelling obscenities. Jody asks, Redacted, Redacted, what are you going to say when you see God? F you. R answered, sure. Redacted cancel. This gave us a full day for Redacted at the end of the day. He was docile, compliant. E cry today, compliant. Man, these two women sitting in prison, they're getting it way too easy. August 8. Redacted is very defined. I found his fingers poopy. He keeps pooping and peeing his pants. Within five minutes of him going to the bathroom, he went in his pants, tried hiding it from me. Later, the spirit told him, told me to ask him some questions. I asked them, I asked them from an assumption position. Also redacted here. August 9. Mom to R. You keep saying you're unwilling to do uncomfortable things, but I watch you continuously do uncomfortable things the devil tells you to do. You would rather be uncomfortable than be obedient. This isn't really about being uncomfortable. This is about being adamantly refusing obedience. You would rather be uncomfortable rather than obedient. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Mom to R. When did you sell your soul to the devil? R, two or three. 
mom, did he come to you or you to him? He came to me, mom. And what is he giving you in exchange for your soul? Money, fame, strength, person, R, nothing. I tell R he can keep his soul. He can have a life he redacted. He stay here to stay here. I told him to think about, I told him to think down have wants i don't know to be obedient to a devil who offers nothing in exchange for every day r becomes aggressive and destructive he starts banging and hitting doors i went in and kicked him knock this off r continues to be destructive and violent i put on a pair of boots i went in and kicked him again you want me to stop what are you getting from satan's when he tells you to kick the door nothing but more pain you want me to help you yes no ruby you want me to feed feed you? R. Yes. Ruby. No. You want me to something and provide for you? R. Yes. Ruby. No. You want to serve the devil and fight fight me and destroy all that I provide and then expect me to give to you. Go ask the devil to help you. Go ask the devil to feed you. I left R. Um, yeah, her kicking him with her boots was in the um that was mentioned before too. I left R, was quiet, contained in the closet. I did leave him yelling. I get that you're rageful. I get that you're angry. You should be. But you got to aim that anger in the correct direction. You keep aiming it at me. I'm trying to help you get your life back. Get angry and denounce Satan. When I left R, was quiet for a bit and then started calling Satan a big lying piece of baloney. I, you know what? I just think she was just a cruel, disgusting person. And she was just using this as a disguise to like, to be abusive to her children. He continued raging and yelling and crying. I believe you, and what do you give me? Nothing but pain. You lie. And I believed you, and I'll admit it. I've been a fool to follow you, but no more. It's not too late. I can turn my life around. Get lost, get lost. I can get my life back through obedience. Is this sincere? His actions will show. R is manipulating his hand. Wet his pants. Ruby to R. You cannot manipulate your way out of pain. The only way out of pain is to humble yourself. You need to pray and show God how you have desecrated your precious body. How you misuse your body. Beg him to help you. I've been such a fool. I don't want to make these choices anymore. Please help me here. God, I won't live this way anymore. My life is crappy. It doesn't have to be this way. Obedience is the way. It's desecrated my soul. I know I can change. I still have a chance. My chance is getting smaller and smaller. I'm not going to choose this anymore. I'm not going to make myself feel anymore. I've made myself such a fool. I believe all these lies and they bring me pain. God, live. I've made choices be so idiotic i've been so aggressive so vile so mean god please hear me in the name of jesus christ um i don't know what this fucking thing is august 10 jody and jay are still in arizona they should be back tonight i'm watching r in the closet and e on the back patio it's warm outside and raining i told r the rain is cleaning the rocks from dirt r p i told her to feel the rain clean her I told her she can be as clean as she wants to be. I checked it on R and asked what he was thinking about. How my choices have led me here. R, did you know you were in the dark pit of despair? R, what do you mean? Chilling, she says. There's something redacted here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to keep a diary entry on this. It's so sickening. E stood in the rain for two hours. A bunch of redactions here. August 15. So we're about two weeks away from them finding the children. For the human who is not humble, today's the constitutes the vast majority. You have to get your, bend your breaking point. R never would have disclosed his sins had he not had a hope that confessing would bring a sense of relief. His motive, because he was, is not humble, was to feel better. Because of all the distractions were taken away and be any belief he was getting them back was banished. We were consistent. We followed through. R was left with only one outlet to find relief. Confession. The world we live in today does not support children being uncomfortable. They, the adults, are uncomfortable with children being uncomfortable. And so the children are comforted, entertained, distracted from the need to confess and change. Stripping down a child's world to the basics of beans and rice and hard work would be considered abuse. And it's not. It's necessary for the prideful child. Now that R has his behaviors out, all of them, he feels like a failure, a monster, useless, worthless. The relief he felt in confession was short-lived, and now there is nowhere to hide. So he becomes overly aggressive, destructive, and combative. Foul language I've never heard is now pouring out. It is the only distraction, pee, poop, damage. The despair comes in. He is weak, infectious, hopeless, and never felt worse. A setup from the devil now is the work. 
it has been three months of consistent boundaries and putting up with his terrorizing to get his confession out. Who would do this in a real world? I don't know of anyone who would feel who would feed their kids in America beans, lentils, rice, and chicken for three straight months and refuse all distraction. This is why Americans are so full of sin and are ready for destruction. They won't repent. Ooh, that's us, y'all. What in chat if you're an American? August 16, Jody and Ruby are two sick people. Mm hmm. They sure are. August 16. Day two of R jumping on a mini trampoline. He needs a lot of help with balance and coordination. Today, I asked him to take off the sock, one sock, by balancing on the opposite foot. Lift up one foot and remove the sock while staying balanced. He fell over, hit his nose on the ground, began bleeding. I gave him a wet rag to wipe his face and toilet paper. He dabbed his face merely to smear the blood. Then he blew his nose so harsh through the toilet paper, he got new blood on his face and all over his shirt. The easiest exercise he is asked to do, he refuses with the decrepit statum you will expect of a 90-year-old. He plays completely helpless. His body is full of evil, puffy infection. He won't participate in the responsibility of flushing it out. Ours life, meaning, and purpose has been don't get caught. And now he's caught. He wants to be done with life. He feels he... He feels he has no meaning. Oh my god, this is so sad. Oy, oy, oy. Dual national here. I live in Australia in the US. Wait, what? Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I'm a one in chat. This woman hated her children. Yeah. Mm hmm. August 21, 2023. Poking is a strategy technique R seems to respond to. Poking, pouring cold water, towel, whip. August 22, 2023. First day, R soaked and jumped as told. He did wet his pants twice. God pelted hail from the heavens he is poking r as well r stayed jumping hail in august in saint george is a mystery a heavenly validation of this intervention um uh, okay all right we're almost done we have like one last page august 27 so three days before getting caught or was it three days or two days A visited for a week last week. I picked her up last Sunday, 20th, and took her home to Springville on Friday. J, A, and Pam packed 20 boxes, took them to a storage shed in Springville. A gave her two weeks notice. R spent the 22nd, 25th peeing, pooping. He's out of control. He's defiant, abusive, and mean. Oh my God, that's so wild. So she thinks the kids are the ones that are abusive, and she thinks her and Jody are the abused. They are the victims here. Did you see? Did you just say that? What's the video? Yeah, I mean, it seems like if this is the life that he has to live, like he probably didn't want to live this life anymore. He'd rather go to jail than be here with his mom. They also made a connection video around that time, which is crazy. Is it still up? The older teenager had a job. Uh, wasn't she picked up at the library or something? He refuses to do what he is asked. Just when I think we found the technique that will work, R digs in and fights harder. Willing to try anything that would grab his attention. I whipped him with a belt yesterday. E2. She peed all over Jody's garage floor, screamed at her, and lied to her. She's out of control. E seemed to give me her attention after the whipping. She swept the garage with some muscle and mopped it. She did a good job. R increased his defiance. Tuesday morning, no Wednesday afternoon. Something about San Diego being crossed out. San Diego taught New Jersey Institute of Technology, U of Washington, Dean of the Computing College, Robert Friedman. Send one essay for each girl. PDF of curriculum. Venmo. That's it. Um, and then they were caught afterwards. Um, yeah, this is... Um, we weren't ready for this. This was way worse than what was mentioned in the police report. And there were a lot of things that they, in my opinion, left out. I really hope that... I don't know. I'm like scared for the kids because what if Kevin Frankie gets custody? 
or like another family member. And what if the family member pushes these kids to have a relationship with their mother? You know how like sometimes when like some really horrible shit happens to you and then you have family members who are like, oh, you know, giving excuses for the abuser and then try to get you to forgive them. Ugh, I don't know. That's what I'm kind of worried about. I'm scared that, you know, what if Kevin Frankie gets, what if he gets custody of these kids and then pushes them to have a relationship with their mom? And, you know, you're probably like, oh, Corgi, why would you think that? Well, you know, there are some jailhouse calls that I was listening to earlier. Let me see if we can find it. Um, yeah, there was these jailhouse calls that were uploaded. And, oh, here it is. Jessica Danielle. This is actually kind of the first time. Um, this is what I listened to. All right, let's listen to these two. This is Ruby Frankie talking to Kevin Frankie in jail. Um, there's no date, but I'm still in the process of downloading these files. So maybe I can get the date somewhere. Maybe. I don't know. I'm like trying to download it, but I feel like the downloading thing is, I don't know. It didn't download. Why? Let's try again. So I don't have the dates. I don't know what you called. You had to put her in a in a chair, and it was it was horrible. It was torturous last night hearing the screaming and and the banging and people. It's like okay, that's that's you know upsetting, but the most upsetting thing is that I am completely misunderstood. That is the. Do you guys think that she's misunderstood? Is is she misunderstood? <laughs> most horrible feeling. Like my own family misunderstands me, they misinterpret me, and and poor Jody, they they misinterpret her, they misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people, and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. It's horrendous. And you know what? Every Joseph Smith, every every wonderful man of God has had to be misunderstood. That's right. And so no, I'm going to get out of this. Who knows? I, maybe, maybe in 10 days I'll get out of this. Maybe in 10 days I'll get out of this. Oh, my God. I really wish we had. I don't think there's dates, right? Yeah, they didn't upload the date on here. She really thought she was going to get out of this in 10 days. She's on the phone talking to Kevin Frankie, by the way, in jail. If I'm, you know, if the if truth prevails right now or, you know, who knows, like 20 years. I, I don't know. I don't know how long. But I'm going to step out. I'm going to say I went through everything I have seen. God's children suffer. All the people here, my jail cellmates, have been beautiful women, but they've been hurt. You know, they've been deceived into drugs. She has more sympathy for her jail cellmates than she did for her children. And she sure as hell has a lot of sympathy for herself. In my heart, it just has so much compassion for them. And I, mm. I have compassion for the cops, and I have compassion for myself. And I... I don't hear her saying she has compassion for her kids. I mean, maybe that's coming up. And then to be told that I'm suicidal, I'm like, no, no, that's not true. Anyway, um, if you need to let Sherry, me... That was either Sherry or one of your siblings. Well, they're all in cahoots. One means all of them, but yes, you're right. In your hearing, I don't know if you've considered this. I don't know if it would be helpful, but you could have the house. <clears throat> and, if, well, and if all the kids go to the house, you've got room there, and I, I, will, I will gladly stay away and... and let you guys be. So I don't know if that's helpful. I'm just giving it to you if it is. Thank you. And wait, am I tripping? Where is Kevin Frankie's voice in all this? Wait, hold on a second. Where's Kevin Frankie's voice? I promise you, when I watched this the first time, Kevin Frankie's voice was in here. Can you guys hear Kevin Frankie's voice? Am I? Is it on the right side? Oh, is the microphone like? Hold on. Oh, the audio is separate. Kevin Frankie's voice is on the right side. It's not okay. I was like, wait, I don't hear Kevin, but I swear to God, when I watched this the first time, I did hear Kevin. Okay, if you guys are on headphones, put both your headphones in. 
I only have one headphone. I usually don't put both headphones in because I like to hear what's going on in my surrounding. I thought it was going crazy. Stay away and, and let you guys be. So I don't know if that's helpful. I'm just giving it to you if it is. Thank you. And in the discussions with with my attorney, that that's the only way that we're going to retain custody of the children. That right there is what scares me, that we're going to retain custody of the children. That to me sounds like he's trying to retain custody of the children for him and Ruby together as a unit combined, despite knowing what she did to these kids. I feel like he's still on Team Ruby. I feel like he's still... I feel like he's still on Team Ruby. There is just something wrong with him. That's the only way that we're going to retain custody of the children. Because maybe in the aftermath, he might be like, oh, wait, no, Corgi, I meant me and the lawyer. No, 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 no. You just said I would retain custody of the children. I think that he's still trying to get the children for both him and her because he thinks they can still go back together as a family after all this. The only way that we're going to retain custody of the children. That's fine. There, he's, he is 35 years in this, and he said, even if you are acquitted and um, are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under 18 children. I figured such. I figured such. God told me. Oh, shut up. God told me when I was driving before I called you. Oh, so she did call him. Okay, because we're like, did she text him? Did she call him? I don't know, man. I feel like Kevin must have asked Ruby what happened. There's no way Kevin was just like, oh, okay, I'll come to the police station, pick up the kids, and not ask why. Why? What's going on? I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything, and the spirit said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not ready. She's not done. She's not ready because she was still abusing them. She wasn't done abusing them yet. It probably wasn't going to be until they died in the hands of the mother and Jody would she be done with them. And the fact that Kevin brings up like her possibly being acquitted, would you really want her acquitted, Kevin? Do you really not care about the children? And God told me I'm done. And I, I just, oh. So. <sighs> Satan has taken everything away from me that I love. And I'm a good woman. I don't do naughty things. I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. Uh. Ruby, I'm going to do everything that I can. Okay. To keep <sighs> truth in our family, and Thank you. I'm I am committed to our family. I'm committed to you and our marriage, no matter what happened. I I need dates on this. I want to know when they had this conversation. <sighs> I don't know. This is. Maybe this was early on when she was just arrested and he still didn't believe that the children were truly in the dire condition that they were in. I don't know, man. This part right here is just like so ick. Ugh. Thank you. I'm, I'm committed to our family. I'm committed to you and our marriage no matter what happened. Thank you. I will be here to support you in any way that I can. Well, thank you for stepping up. This, I this, do need to go, but okay. All right. call me back when or if you need. When will you find out? How can I call you? When should I call so I find out what they I don't know. I wonder when this phone call took place, because if it took place after the divorce, he was obviously doing it just to look better in the media. 
maybe after this he had a change of heart and he was like you know what screw her maybe but i feel like a lot of the stuff that him and his lawyer were doing i thought it was i had an inkling that was just all damage control i was like you know what maybe maybe the guy was i don't know maybe he did say fuck you jody or fuck you ruby but i sense a lot of damage control with what they were doing um the moment that there were other victims that came out they hopped on that bandwagon and was like oh hey me too i'm also a victim here i'm jody's victim but that was like my inkling that i had i say i don't know how long this will go but if you call this afternoon i, I will know this is a preliminary um let me go to the eight passengers arc uh read it really quick let's listen to this Jody Hildebrandt phone call, children versus adults. Nobody wants oh, the truth. Yeah. Nobody wants the truth. Nobody wants the truth because these kids, you know, I told Doug, I woke up, the spirit told yeah. me, it's all the devil. Oh. I mean, you've seen him. I mean, I've known you, what, for five years, you've watched him come at me, come at me, come at me, come at me. Who is she on the phone with? Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right because he knows I know what he's doing. And he uses these kids. And he uses yep. all of us as the adults, the parents that don't hold the kids accountable. So now it's it's yeah. abusive to make a kid sleep on the floor. It's abusive, or it's abusive to, you know, it's ridiculous. No, it's not just sleeping on the floor, Jody. Get it right. There are other things that you're doing to the kids, not just simply sleeping on the fucking floor. It's ridiculous. You can't even raise your kids anymore. And there's also probably a reason why her daughter cut her out of her life. Um, Ruby Frankie talking to prison, uh, to her parents, I guess. They call from and paid for by. Ruby Frankie, Purgatory Correctional. An inmate at Purgatory Correctional Facility. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. Hello. That's her dad, I guess. Thank Hello. You for using Telmate. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah. What okay, that it? was. Over there. It's uh, nine nine thirty. We're good. Okay. At right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. We're eight hours ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you could call us back. Yeah. I haven't used the phones very much. They're kind of hard to figure out. But, um, yeah, I think I figured out how to use... I don't think this one will shut me off. I think the one I called you with a free call on this one will be paid for um, by my account. Kevin, okay. and I both put some money in it. <clears throat> so, okay. Bo is one of her brothers, or I don't know if she has other brothers, but I know Bo is like a brother, and he wrote a letter to the judge on her behalf. Um, same thing with the parents. Um, but I, I was saying I, I can't say everything that I want to say, but um, I really did feel a, I really did feel like the arrest was like a rescue. Like I just felt so many angels around and it was like a really it was just really kind of surreal kind of strange so she said it feels like a rescue there were so many angels around i think she's referring to herself that she was rescued not about the children um, but i i just keep thinking about you know president nelson's talk you know things so show and i know he said in the past about my ethic thinking and and he's he's given a lot of context to you know how small this life really is, and I'm just so grateful. How many people, you know, the go to the grave not not having woken up? And I just I want to use this time. Thank you for calling Purgatory. We're happy to assist you with all your purgatorial communications. <laughs> and I have everything this time to. To change it, to repent, and to 
do what I can to help the Lord know I love him and my family. And, uh, <clears throat> I've had many experiences here to kind of guide my thinking. It's like, I don't know, my, my attorney's been really good. Did you know my attorney is... Okay, um, I don't know what the hell we got from that. Um, oh, this one. I was gonna watch. This is actually... She got her lawyer from Jody. There is a video of, um, them discovering the daughter at Jody's house. I'll post it in the Discord if you guys want to watch that. And then, um, I post the injuries of one of the child and how you can see how emaciated it was. Um, the article is linked in the Discord, but I'm not going to show it on the stream. Ruby siblings are trashing the parents are trash that raised them to be trash, possibly. I don't know much about their family. Um, all I know is they all have the fucking YouTube family channels, and that's always been like <sighs> to me. Um, did you did you see that Jody pled guilty today? I did see that. Yes, is that a relief? for you mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. a big relief it's a yeah. big relief uh, there there would have been positive the other way too had she not pled guilty there's enough evidence that she would have been could have been convicted for life but um, yeah that would have been messy it would have been really okay. messy and yeah, the I'm kids would have so um, so do you and her get the same outcome no matter what now, or is there a chance that it would be different? That's a that's a really good question. That's one that I've asked. Oh, I didn't know whose voice was whose. I was like, uh, I I couldn't tell which one was Ruby. Ruby's the one on the uh, the one in the left ear, I guess, and her voice is a bit deeper. So I guess she's talking to her sister right now. Um, we were wondering who to who took the plea deal first. Who pled guilty first? My understanding it was her that took the plea deal first and then Jody followed suit afterwards, but I wasn't really sure on that. Lamar, um, no, we can still have different outcomes. So um, Ellie asked a little bit about this. Um, I wrote it out in a text um, to her, but so the next thing that will happen is I will fill out, and she will fill out, a probation and, um, probation and, there's another P, um, paperwork, and basically you go through your history and you tell them your history, which, there's no history on me, there, there's nothing, yeah. no criminal history, no mental health history, nothing, um, and I'm also hiring, um, a professional to do a mental health evaluation just to say she's she's good like there's no mental health problems at all mm -hmm. and then that will go to my probationary board Jody she can lie on her paperwork and uh -oh. she probably will uh oh is this where we're turning on each other apparently she started turning on Jody in December so about September October November Four months, I guess? September? I don't think she's going Wait, to. Wait, August, September, October, November, December. So four months until she turned on Jody? On her paperwork. And uh -huh. she probably will. I don't think she's going to give them her history. But I think in the interview, it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill. Uh -huh. Um and so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking, how, how repentant are you? How much responsibility are you taking? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling y'all. She knows how to play the game. I think she just wants out of this. I don't truly believe that she knew that. I, I don't truly believe that she accepts everything that she did was wrong because she sounded so fucking delusional, crazy. In those journal diaries. I think she's just trying to manipulate right now. Oh my god. I got manipulated. How 
how are you aware that what you've done is wrong and she's not she's the only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life and she knew I would testify um, the other thing is on my plea deal when I come up for probation the the prosecuting attorney can um, will often if they think that you're a danger to society will talk to the probationary board and and or write them a letter saying I think she needs to stay where she is yeah because what they're saying is that the reason why Ruby is not a danger to others because they don't think Ruby has the power to influence other people to do this right I, I, I beg to differ. But anyways, they said Jody was the one who's the dangerous to society because who knows how many other people Jody got um, to, you know, leave their significant others, dump their kids with her and, you know, abuse them. But I, seeing how delusional she was, uh, how crazy she is in those journal entries, I think it's possible that what if she has grandchildren one day? Right? I don't know. I, I just... <laughs> Oh, and it's funny how everyone refers to Jody as a therapist, but and I think in the police interview, Jody referred to herself as a um, psychiatrist or something. Like, oh, I'm a psychiatrist. I've been on your side before, you guys. <laughs> um, he's going to stay neutral and not write any letter when my probation comes up, which is a really big deal. But for okay. her, he's he's not going to stay neutral. So... Oh, okay. We can come up to probation, and I can get off on probation, and she may not. So what does probation look like? Like, what does that all entail? It can look like several different things, I think. I'm still learning about this, and I think it's... I never realized how complicated it is. I always thought you pled oh, guilty, the and they tell you how long you're in. Yeah, there's a lot of terminology to know. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, half of the stuff that is said goes over my head, and then I have to go, you know, I come back and I ask the girls here, I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Yeah. Um, but probation could look like going home, like... Yeah, no, don't give her probation. If she gets probation, I'm be so fucking pissed. You could go home sometimes... Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it might look like going home with with restrictions, like you can go home, but you need to live with somebody who's responsible and you can't be around certain people. Like, they may say, you could go home if your parents agree to house you, but you can't go home to where your kids are living. It could look like something like that. Okay. Or it could look like something where I have an ankle monitor or it could look like you can go home if you pay a $10,000 fine, or maybe it could look like um, instead of serving the rest of your time, we'll give you some good time and you can go home in half the time. Or So I, I think that you probation, getting off on probation, I think looks... Bye, Stevie. Have a good meeting. Have fun. Like... There's several different ways that that could happen. Oh. She's already fantasizing about getting out, getting promotion, serving half the time, blah, 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 blah. I see. Oh, here's um, one of Jody's clients, because we were talking about corn earlier. Um, there was a client of Jody's that told 2020, Jody heavily focused on the issue of pornography addiction in their relationships, sometimes even the expense of ignoring other issues that the couple was facing. Stephanie Jones, who along with her ex-husband sought Hildebrandt's therapy services from 2018-2019, said Hildebrandt used the term addict to describe all corn usage. Quotation marks. With Jody, you look at it one time and you're an addict. That's why I was saying that, like, I don't know if he really was an addict or if Jody was just, like, exacerbating it. Um, because it seems like she has other clients that said the same thing in Good interviews. Yeah. And is that usually after you've already served full time then? Say, say that one more time. That's after you have served some time. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know 
what that is going to be. I don't know if it's one of the girls said that it would be for me six months, but I've also heard it could be four years, and some people serve several years before they ever see their probation board. So okay. I, I'm really still, I mean, I could be in there four years, I could be in there 30. Like, I really don't know. Yeah. And that will come in February? Mm-hmm, on February 20th. Okay. Yeah. Wait, one in chat, if you can hear me? One in chat, if you can hear me? And um, the news that I saw today, Jody's um, sentence hearing is also February 20th. So I'm going to make a... Okay, I wasn't sure because Nicole was like, did y'all lose Corky? I was like, uh-oh, do we have internet issues? Okay, I see some ones in the chat. Okay, two in chat if you can't hear me. <laughs> um, it appears that two weeks after the first police interview, Kevin went to go speak with the police a second time. This time, Kevin no longer defends his wife and describes in more detail, he says, sessions with Hilda Brent was like, were like after he and Ruby were separated. Every week was just hell, psychological hell, and Jody was running in. So I am really curious to know when uh, these phone calls took place between Kevin and Ruby. Maybe initially he was on her side and maybe at some point he woke the fuck up and realized that she's also the devil. Or, you know, maybe it's all a ruse. Maybe he's pretending. I don't know. To request that we be transferred in two different vans. I don't think they're going to accommodate that. Oh, uh, do they? Okay, I see. Yeah, when we, so when I went to the courthouse last week, what they do, and I, and I, they did this when they transported me to Utah County as well, they pull all the girls, there's only two housing here for girls, there's not very many girls here, but there's okay. many for the men, and so they take the girls and they put them in a cell together, in a holding cell to wait, and then they get all the men together, and they put all the men in the cells, and then they start putting on the ankle bracelets and the chains and the mm -hmm. everything on the men while you're so you're sitting in the cell with these women you're going to the court with he was on her side at first one of the calls he tells her he'll do whatever he can to help her that he won't leave her he'll hold down for the fourth time of thing yeah that's the part that we listened to but i was like i don't have the dates for these calls i'm trying to get the the files right now but i, I still can't get the files okay the internet's not having it today i don't know not having it today but um I was just hoping that those phone calls weren't, or that phone call in particular, wasn't made like months after when he realized what the children went through. Um, it seems here, it seems that in January 2024, he filed a restraining order to block the sale of Jody Hildebrand's house. Maybe that's why her house is not sold yet. In the filing, he's asking for restitution to pay for the ongoing psychological care for the children. And I hope that goes to the children directly. I hope... You know, sometimes when the money goes to the parents, the parents have to dole it out, and then they don't really do what they're supposed to with the money. Both Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand pled guilty. Da, 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 da. Okay. For an hour, and you're sitting with them, and then they pull the girls out, and they line you up, and then they put the shackles on you, and then they take the men out to the van, the men's van, and then they, they take the women out to the women's van, and then you drive to the courthouse together, and then... They take How you out far they... away is your place from the courthouse there in St. George? Um, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay. okay. And, um, and then you sit in a cell at the court. So if someone's hearings at 9, this is what happened to me. There was a girl that went with me, and her hearing was at 9, but mine wasn't until 11. So she went in, and she had like a five-minute hearing. And then we sat in the cell and talked for two hours until it was my turn. And then we oh. rode back together. So you, you pretty much spend several hours together, whoever is okay. going to the court that day with you. Interesting. So that mm -hmm. means on February 20th, it would be you and her going together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When was... I think, I'm gonna, I think what I have to do is download the files separately. I'll try that because instead of downloading all the files at once, I probably just have to download the audio separately, the photos separately, blah, blah, blah. Um, and just be aware when you're downloading the files, uh, everything's in there. So there might be some things you didn't, you don't like seeing.
was the last thing you talked to her? Was it that day? Mm hmm It was when we were arrested. Okay. Yeah. I went, I left early in the morning to go to a dentist appointment with Julie. We left at like 3 in the morning. And she called me sometime in the morning. And, I, and so I went back down. But when I got to the house, I mean, it, it looked like, it looked like the movies. There was a red fire truck. There was a black van with tinted windows. There was, there were two ambulances. There were 20 cop cars. I mean, it was, it was. Did you just sit in your car? No, I, I pulled up and found a spot to park. She lives on a cul-de-sac. I parked in the cul-de-sac and I walked up and the the driveway was just full of cops and I just walked up to the cops. And mm. they said, Oh, I wonder this body cam footage, the moment that she walked up to one of the law enforcement people. Said, they said, are you the mother? And I nodded my head and so they took me in and put me in the casita and I sat there for a couple hours I just sat there and then um, they, were, they were finishing looking through the house and stuff I think and um, some of the guys were coming in and out with pizza and so I think I think yeah he, they gave the pizza to one of the daughters um, the youngest daughter though so hiding in the closet it was still there because the ambulance car was there was eating pizza with the police and then, um, and then once once the kids were taken in the ambulance cars, then the detective came and patted me down and arrested me, and then took me to the courthouse for questioning, which I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't say anything because Lamar was really helpful. Who's Lamar? Wait a second. Hold on. In this article, it says Detective Jessica Bate of the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department said one of the final straws for the Frankie marriage came when Hildebrandt moved into the couple's home after she had a crisis in her own home. Kevin was initially hesitant, but he says in his interview with the police that he was persuaded by Ruby to help Hildebrandt out. So Jody moved in with the with the family at some point and then booted Kevin out. Mm. Oh, her lawyer's name is Lamar. His name is Lamar, really? I don't remember that. Like, I would remember that. I don't know, man. Something up with Ruby and with Jody. Like, if you ever get arrested, don't say anything. I just didn't say anything. And she How was like, How did you find Lamar? Did he, was he just assigned to you, coincidentally, or did you? Um, so she has a, she has an attorney that she's used for connections mm -hmm. and, and I called him and no one answered, but then she called him and he said, I only do like business law. I don't do criminal law, but here's a number of two people who do. Okay. So remember we were wondering that, uh, with the different lawyers, it's like, it's possible that the lawyer is like, oh, I just don't practice like defense attorney shit. Okay. That I would highly recommend. And so she gave the two numbers and I got the number from Kevin. I don't, I don't know how the numbers got from, I don't, I don't know how, but, um, that he, Kevin said, here's your attorney and this is her attorney. And so and that was Wait, so did Kevin get the attorney from Jody? And then he passed that information along to to Ruby? The last time I talked to Kevin was a couple of days after my arrest, but so I didn't see Jody at all when I went to the house to turn myself in. I didn't see her. Okay. And and I went and they took me to the courthouse and the detective is like, I've got all night. We can talk all night. And I didn't say anything. I just said, I, I want an attorney. Wait, wait, hold on more. On, hold on. I'm like reading this article. Bay told ABC News that Kevin Frankie said this moment led to a shift in his marriage. 
Jody really integrated herself and she would go on their anniversary dinners. She would just be there. Mm -hmm. As is all happening behind the scenes, the three were appearing in videos on social media accounts for connections, the life coaching business that Hildebrandt founded. In one series of videos, the live couples workshop, Kevin and Frankie are seen discussing topics like marriage and sex together, sometimes alongside Hildebrandt or other couples. But by 2022, Ruby and Jody appear together in numerous videos and Kevin is notably absent. I thought Kevin made it seem like he didn't really hang out with Jody, but it seems like she was living at their house. She was going on their anniversary dinner. Dinners. Sorry. I mean, anniversary dinners. I mean, how often are you celebrating your anniversary? There were all three in videos with connections. Kevin made it seem like he was like, he barely even knew Jody. Remember in um, Randy Kessler, Kevin's attorney did an interview about this. Oh my God, we should go back by it. But by 2022, Ruby and Jody appeared together in numerous videos. Kevin is notably absent. His disappearance with the Connections content overlaps the timeline when he moved out of the Frankie home in July of that year, although he was still a therapy patient of Hildebrand's at the time. Two weeks after the first police interview, Kevin went to speak with police the second time. Okay, I read this part already. Um, Kinda weird. So Jody inserts herself in into marriages and then finds a way to boot the husband out. That way she's alone with just her and the wife, and then she has control of the wife, the kids. Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet, Janae. Um, I can't, I don't know if the files are not really downloading on my end. I just have to wait till someone posts it on YouTube. Okay. So, uh, I could hear Kevin in the hallway talking, and then he left, and when they took me out of the room, they took me outside and cuffed me and, and said, again, they cuffed me again and then put me, they told me you're under arrest for, and then they told me two, two of the charges and then they had me get in the, in the patrol car and that's when I saw Jody. I saw Jody was also in the patrol car and, um, she she had surgery on her shoulder and she couldn't put her hands behind her back so then they pulled her out and changed up the way they arrested her so she could drive with her hands in front of her and then we had about a 40 minute 45 minute drive to the jail and that was the last time I spoke to her we were in the back and um, we didn't say a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we talked the whole time, but I don't remember really saying a whole lot. We sang a hum, like hummed a couple hymns, and she she was she was still justifying the whole time. She was like, "Don't worry, don't worry. We'll have our day in court," and then. And then when we were booked in, um, they put us in separate cells, and we've been in separate cells ever since. So. Okay. Do you hate talking about that kind of stuff? Does it trigger anything, or do you, or is it just? Which sister is she talking to? Do you guys recognize her voice? No, I don't. I I think it's. Fun. No, I don't mind talking about it. It's, Okay. Maybe good for me to talk about it. I don't know if you <laughs> will like no, talking I mean, about it. I was just wondering if it triggered anything. But yeah. if you're doing okay mentally, and then that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, I think the... I think putting the pieces together and just seeing, like, she knew she was lying the whole time. Like, I, it, and it's embarrassing, too, to, like, repeat it. It's like, oh, my gosh, how gullible was I? Oh, my gosh, how, how much power I gave this person. Mm -mm. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. She's just trying to shift the blame. And I didn't see it. But when I realized, so, so she had, her attorney's name is, Doug, Terry, and mine's Lamar, and, and Lamar, you know, maybe a month into it, he's maybe not even that long, he's like, Jody 
denies everything. She denies having anything to do with this, and I was shocked. I was like, what? And I'm I'm still telling Lamar, like, you know, all, all of the... Oh, uh, so maybe Jody denied everything because she didn't know there was a journal entry or there was a journal diary that was kept. Maybe Jody was the one who denied everything. She got pissed. She turned on Jody, took the plea deal. I wonder if that's the timeline event. Sorry, let me go back a little bit. But when I realized, so, so she had her attorney's name is Doug, Terry, and mine's Lamar. And, and Lamar, you know, maybe a month into it, he's maybe not even that long. He's like, Jody denies everything. She denies having anything to do with this. And I was shocked. I was like, what? And I'm, I'm still telling Lamar, like, you know, all, all of the justifications and all of the, you know, I'm talking like a criminal. I sound like a mad person. He was so patient yeah. with me. He was so patient with me. He would just look at me and like kind of dumbfounded, like, like I'd said, two plus two is seven and I really believed it and he would just stare at me. I'm like, what am I saying that's so off? And, um, <laughs> but, but that's because I really believed it. But, but then when I heard that Jody was not talking like that, she was denying the whole thing. It told me she knew all along. It's like, it's like a little kid who doesn't know it's wrong to pee in their underwear. Like they don't know. They're not embarrassed yeah. by it. It's like, oh, oh, I was supposed to be in the toilet. Oh, oh, oops. But you get That's a six-year-old. <laughs> you know, you get a six-year-old who knows they're supposed to yeah. pee in the toilet and they're peeing down the heater vent. They're going to try to hide it. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized she knew, she knew all along. And she's hiding it. And then I was like, crap, what, what am I saying? I don't know. I think she's trying to just get this on the... She probably knows these calls are recorded. She knows people are going to listen to this at some point. I think she's just trying to go away with her hands clean, like saying, like, oh, I didn't know any of this. I think the moment that Jody was like, oh, I I didn't do this. She's like, wait, what? Wait, holy fuck. Like, now I'm fucked. She probably thought that Jody was going to go down with her. <laughs> that's why she turned on Jody. And that's when things kind of started turning. I was like, she was... She's not been honest. I didn't... I didn't know she wasn't honest. I didn't know she would lie. And it's like, what else has she been lying about? Where else are, have I been deceived? Mm-hmm. What was that? Oh, no, I was just, yeah, agreeing. Yeah. You, you did see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just like the, the little string that started pulling apart this fabric. Yeah, I feel like Ruby found her yes man, okay? She fucking found the yes man that would co-sign all the abuse that she was going to endure on the fucking children, all right? And she was living in it. She was journaling it. She was she was reveling in it, okay? Fuck her. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Now she's like, okay, well, I need to make sure this looks good on me. So when the jailhouse calls, I'm going to make sure it sounds good because these people on YouTube, these people on the news, they're going to fucking play all this shit. I got to make sure I make, it, make, make, I make it look like that I didn't know what the fuck was going on, that I was being deceived the entire time. She's manipulating. She's trying to manipulate right now. What have I done? Like, what? So I can talk about it now. That's yeah, go good. ahead. Because during the sentencing, I was like, oh, you know, I hope that she has changed. It's for the best of her kids. You know, maybe she did. I don't know. I mean, she sounded way more sorry than she did to fuck than, um, than Jody did, right? Jody's like, she gave like one liner. Her, I didn't really like her sentencing speech at all, but she gave us a lot more than what Jody did. But I don't know. Now I'm just like, oh, God, this is just manipulation. Lamar was just very, very kind that day that we met with him. It was a very oh. kind time and just visit with us. Oh, like miraculous. He, like, liked, yeah, yeah. He and his wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had us. he had a way of like he he didn't beat around the bush. Like, exactly she knew her and jody would have gone to prison she knew the entire time yeah when she woke up at 245 and our had escaped she said in her journal if she hadn't found him her and jay would have gone to prison she knew the whole time mm-hmm. there were some times he would say things that were shocking to me like he 
he would like repeat what I said, but he would say it in a different tone so I could hear myself. And he's like, is that really what you think? And I'm like, oh. And he would, but then there were other times that you have one minute remaining for this call. Do you do you want to end the call or do you want me to call you back? How do you want to? Um, we can end for today and then we'll okay. we can always talk again. So yeah, I'm just really glad that he's got your that he's there to kind of help you through it and. Mhm. Mm yeah. yeah. Well, that first night I was in the jail, I, I just felt really strongly like. I'm sending you help. Help is coming. Yeah. And I just yeah. felt like that was that was Lamar, and he's been very, very helpful. I'm grateful yeah. for him. Well, that's what we've all been praying for this whole time. So mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. glad that even it, it, it's a different kind of help, but I'm glad it's finally here. Me too. Me too. I'll take it. Like I, I hate this, but I'll, I'm taking it. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, if there's a link to any of the other audio recordings, let me know. I just wanted to read this article over right here. Frankie and Hildebrandt calls from jail. In jail recordings released Friday, Frankie and Hildebrandt justified the abuse of Frankie's two youngest children. Frankie called the prosecution a witch hunt while Hildebrandt was emotional in one of her jailhouse calls. Hildebrandt was speaking to an unknown woman whom Hildebrandt says she had known for years. Hildebrandt told the woman the spirit had told her the devil had influenced the children. Nobody wants the truth, she said tearfully. Now it's abusive to make a kid sleep on the floor. It's abusive or it's abusive. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You can't even raise your kids anymore. So that we listened to. In a call made the day after her arrest, Frankie spoke to a man who was not identified by name but could have been her estranged husband, Kevin Frankie. The man told Ruby Frankie her children are in foster care and he plans to fight to get them back. So this is the day after the arrest. Ruby Frankie said, Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what it takes to fight it. You've seen what it takes to fight evil. It's not the person you're fighting and can look like something it's not. And you've been there. You know that. In a call on September 1, Frankie is heard expressing concern for Hildebrandt and distress in the feeling that they were both misunderstood. In quotations, That is the most horrible feeling, like my own family misunderstand me. They misinterpreted me. It, bleh, they misinterpret me. And poor Jody, they misinterpret her. They misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people and then they get mad at her. I mean, it's just horrendous. During a recorded call in October, Hilda Brett is heard saying, I shouldn't be here. I haven't done anything wrong. That's the phone call that I want to listen to. Um, I have not heard it yet and I can't download it. She went on to say, when I get out of here, I have a story to tell and I'm going to try to do everything I can to protect the children because that's what's happening is that kids are being absolutely horribly abused. Oh boy. By early December, audio recordings of jail phone call reveal Frankie starts to turn on Hildebrandt. She says, I think just being gone and not hearing her has cleared up a lot of things for me. I don't think that's true. I think that she realizes Jody was not taking responsibility. She was denying things and that's why... Jo that's why Ruby Frankie changed her mind, okay? Then during a call towards the end of the month, Frankie discusses the fact that Hildebrandt pleaded guilty and calls Hildebrandt mentally ill. Frankie says, the only reason why she pled is because she didn't want to do life. She knew I would testify. Okay, so the call that we just listened to just now was at the end of December. So something must have happened beginning of December or end of November, something like that. And it went to the grapevine and went back to Ruby that, hey, you know, Jody Hildebrandt, she's denying everything. Oof. Yeah, I, 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 I don't believe her bullshit. Frankie discussed the possibility that she could be released within a few months or years. Uh, oh, yeah, we already listened to this part right here. Okay. Oh, my God, that makes sense. Because I was like, you know, maybe she did have her mind cleared up because she wasn't near Jody Hildebrandt for the past couple months. No, that's not. I don't buy that. It's because she realized Jody denied everything. Um, okay, so there's that one. And then... Let's see. Someone uploaded the rest of Kevin, Frank Kevin Frankie's calls. Maybe we'll listen to that. I want to listen to the other calls from, um, from Jody. Uh, 
uh, parts one, two, and three. We haven't listened to this yet. Let me see where we're at, though. Purgatory Correction. An inmate at Purgatory Correctional Facility. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. Press one to accept all communications from this inmate and tellmate. To deny this call, press. Thank you for using Tellmate. <laughs> this call voice. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Okay. When I saw how long this separation was lasting, I wanted to think of some ways that I could. Nobody wants oh, the yeah. truth. Nobody wants the truth. Wait, shit. Fuck what I did. for buy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Bring in money or make some money if if you didn't ever come back. So I was that's when I asked if you would co sign on the loan if I found a house and maybe I could Airbnb it or rent it out or I've been playing with numbers in my head and I think I could make something but I don't want to be dumb. I'm, I want to be very conservative. So I I pulled the money and I have it in a bag. And with you? Do the police have it? Well I, I don't know what the police took. I don't know what the police have. But the bag is that Jody has they, they can't just take people's money. I mean that that's not right. Well, they're not going to take the money, but when they have a search warrant, they have access to everything in the house. Sure. Yeah. I grew up Baptist. My bio family was obsessed with work and sweat. God forbid someone was disabled in the family. Trust it was noted. Ah, thankfully, I don't have to interact with them. I'm glad for you. I, I have a feeling we're going to need that money. We might do. We might do. So... Um, I haven't been making big purchases. I've been very conservative. I think the biggest expense has been the kids schooling. And that. Sorry, can you guys hear? I, I, I can't boost the audio. Um, the sound booster that I have only works for YouTube. Um, I can't boost the audio. Wait, what the fuck? Ah, did I? Oh my God, I hate, I hate using Reddit. Ah, oh, I hate using Reddit. I'm sorry. This is a free call from access to everything in the house. Sure. Yeah. Do the police have it? Well, I, I don't know what the police took. I don't know what the police have. Yeah, I guess just listen to the captions, maybe. They're talking about money right now. Apparently, um, she got Kevin to co-sign something with the house. She was hoping to Airbnb it. She has a bag of cash somewhere. She's wondering where the cash is. They're like, oh, does the police have it? She's like, oh, the police can't take your cash. That's not right. Um, they have a feeling they're going to need a lot of money. The bag is that Jody's they house. Can't just, they can't just take people's money. I mean, that, that's not right. Melody! Well, they're not going to take the money, but when they have a search warrant, they have access to everything in the house. Sure. Melanie Jacobs, thank you so much for becoming a member. Enjoy your emotes and your little badge. How are you doing today? Thank you, thank you. Thanks for the support. I, I have a feeling we're going to need that money. We might do. We might do. So, um, I haven't been making big purchases. I've been very conservative. I think the biggest expense has been the kids schooling, and that's um, they have enough curriculum to get them for a couple years. So. Uh. Um, okay. I just received a text from Ted Dawson out of the blue. Mm -hmm. His door, Ted Dawson. Something about Ted Dawson, he received a text out of the blue. Who I haven't heard from in years. Wait, he just texted you? Yeah, the what story he's out. So he said... 
I wonder how long they were hoping for this to be shush shush for. Or hush hush? Shush shush? <laughs> What's the word that I'm looking for? <laughs> the one who sent me an article and it just broke my heart. I think this is in the very beginning still uh, because he said the news just broke out. So probably the day of or a couple hours afterwards or the next day. I Yeah, we don't have dates, unfortunately. I think once I download the files, we should have the dates then. Um, but they don't tell you what the dates are for these, which I don't know why. I just wanted you to know I'm thinking about you and if I can ever be a resource, we are always here. Are we in the news? It sounds like at, at least you're in the news. I don't know about me. I don't know what he's talking about. But. Well, Kevin, you're in the news by association because these involve your kids. I know that you've been gone for 18 months and hard for you to fathom that you'd be associated with this, but you are because you're the father of the children. Um, there are some dates on my end. I just don't know what calls respond to which, but I have some from... August, September, October, and then all the way to December. I'm wondering if they went to Sherry to like ask her questions. I don't know. She's looking for public. I'm, I know they are. And mm, try to blame it on Sherry. Yeah, there are dates on here, but I, I can't I don't know. I've been trying to download these files, but I think the connection is not good because a lot of people are probably doing the same thing, so it keeps timing out. If I open if I open each file directly, we could probably listen to it, but it might take a while for it to open. I don't know. The business insider was reaching out to me, and I ignored their email. But um, I'm going dark. This is a witch. I'm not a BYU. I'm not a BYU anymore, so I don't know how they're going to find me. Yeah, maybe it was a blessing. This is a witch hunt. I, I <laughs> the devil been after me for years and she's mad as heck that she said this is a witch hunt the devil's been after me for many years and then Ooh. why does it sound like this have you what? shared that with the detective I have not said a word until we have an attorney. Okay, well, you know that this phone call is being recorded. You have one minute <laughs> remaining for this call. Yes, that will come out. That will come out. Okay. Okay, so she knows that these phone calls are going to come out. We're going to be listening to them. So when we were when we were driven to the jail, um, the detective was putting us in the car, and Jody said. Same. I had to refresh as well, Sabrina. They're going to be in the hospital for three days. So weird. It's just not necessary. It's so weird. It's not necessary. <sighs> hmm. They're trying to exaggerate this. Her kids are starving. Well, they I, were hurt. I don't. They didn't show me. Well, they didn't show me any pictures or anything. But the way they described it, it was very serious. You have exceeded the allowable time <gasps> for this call. No. Goodbye. No. Oh my God. I wanted her to respond to that. Can please see the truth. I know it's obscured. I'm, I'm, where I see the facts, I see the truth, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm gathering. You know my heart. What are they charging you with? Two degrees of second, two charges of second degree felony for child abuse. Two charges of second degree felony child abuse. Yes. Um, okay. Wow. Oh, that's very serious. I'm a little 
I don't know. I, I don't understand why he's not asking, so what did you do to them? It's as if he doesn't want to know. Because I feel like you'd be like, oh, so what happened then? Tell me from your perspective. Like, what did you do to them? But maybe he doesn't want her to talk because he knows there's a recorded call. I have. It's interesting. I had the prompting over the last month to read Mr. Frankel. <laughs> like, I was reading him, and it was like the worst part was not knowing the end. He said those who, he said he had a, a an inmate that's man search for meaning. He was a prisoner in World War II, and he said the worst part and the greatest bringing of depression was not the lack of food and it wasn't the she's talking about reading some book about some guy weather conditions it was not knowing how long it would last about some guy who was in prison and the worst part was not knowing how it was going to last it wasn't the food it wasn't the weather condition so i think i was prepared for this i do feel strong mm -hmm. and feel calm and you know what they they may Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes to fight it. You've seen what it takes to fight evil. It's not the person you're fighting. And it can look like something it's not. And you've been there, you know that. And so I don't know any adults who are going to see the truth. Bye, Irene. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging out with us. So... I'm calm about this, and I just pray that you'll hang in there. You have yeah. one minute remaining for this call. I think I can call yeah. back, but... Yeah, but just in case, I'm, I'm preparing to step up and fight for the children. They've been taken. And they're going to be, there's going to be a hearing in the next couple of days here in Provo. I'm sorry, I just, I signaled. Oh, yeah, Victor Frankel. I don't know who that is. To, 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 will you say that one more time? Yes. I'm prepared to step up and fight for the children. Wait, are you serious? Victor Frankel survived the camp in Holocaust, wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. So she's, a, she's comparing her experience to that. Oh, what a martyr she is. They've been taken into custody. They're in foster care, and there's going to be a hearing within the next uh, two or three days. What about Abby and Julie? Them too. All four were taken. Where did they go to get Abby and Julie? <laughs> She's like, wait, how did they find the other children? By Queen. I don't know. They, they. While I was with them, they got Abby, and they were looking. You have for exceeded Julie. the allowable time for this call. Goodbye. You, know, you, called, you had to put her in a in a chair, and it was it was horrible. It was torturous last night hearing the screaming. And okay, we listened to this one already. The children. No. Okay. To keep <sighs> truth in our family. Okay. Yeah, we listened to this already. Um, I think that's it for. Well, let me double check. Let me go home. Let's see if there's anything that pops up. I think that's about it. Um, I'll have to wait until we get to download some files, maybe. If there's anything else to cover. But... Oh, is this the hot sauce and the rope that they were talking about? Hold on, let me just make sure they don't show anything too crazy. Give me a second. We go live to Garrett. I have the pictures up right here, but um, I have not gone through them. Oh, that must be what they were referencing to. Remember how they said that they found rope, duct tape. Um, there was like a hot sauce. Or sorry, it wasn't a hot sauce. It was like a cayenne pepper mixture with honey. And people were saying like, oh, well, sometimes you use honey to dress wounds. But if you're putting in cayenne pepper, I feel like you're obviously trying to make it sting and make it hurt. And we live in the modern times, like, use Neosporin or something, okay? I think they were trying to torture these kids and make things hurt as much as possible. So that's the rope that they found. That's, like, the honey. Here's, uh, I guess, more rope in the drawer. I don't know whose bed this is, like, a pink sheets. I don't know whose bed this is. Maybe this is, like, Jody's or something like that. That's a lot of cayenne. Yeah, it seems like that was a shit ton. 
Um, and it seems like it would probably it would probably sting. You read his book? Maybe I should check it out then. I have not heard about it before. Anyone else have a stroller for their pup? I just got back. I do. I'm one of those people. It's because we go to Vegas a lot, and then um, it gets really hot to walk on the floor. So when we transport uh, Shiro, we put him in the little stroller. Whew. Okay. Well, um, let me just see if there's anything else that pops up. But, I mean, we covered a lot. Um, they literally just dumped all the evidence uh, today. I think like six, like probably about like 12 hours ago. So they'll probably release more stuff. Um, I can't really get access to the actual files, but I linked them in the Discord. If you guys want to check them out yourself, if there's anything in there that's interesting or anything you want to discuss about, feel free to put it in the Discord section in the True Crime uh, channel. And then also I posted some of the other stuff that I didn't cover on the stream. Uh, there are some things that I don't want to look at on the stream, but I posted the links um, to other articles that has it. You guys can take a look at it. There are some other body cam footages when um, one of the child initially went up to the neighbor and they called 911. Um, that's super sad because he goes up there and he's like telling the neighbor to take me to jail, show me where the jail is. And they're like, why do you want to go to jail? And he's like, oh, it's personal business. Probably because he'd rather be in jail than be with Jody and his mom. Um, and there's a footage of when they found the other child the the girl that they shaved her head and she was hiding in the closet and she didn't want to come out she was probably scared to come out because she didn't want to deal with the consequences when her mom found out oh wild you don't think she's jody's victim as all i i initially was like you know what maybe she's jody's victim maybe she was brainwashed manipulated but i don't believe that anymore i i just don't i think ruby just wanted someone to just be a co-abuser um she found someone that was just as sick as her you know, two sick people found each other. I think that's what it was. I think, yeah, there might have been some initial manipulation with convincing Ruby to kick Kevin out of the house, maybe. But I think the two of them were in cahoots. I hope they both get a fuck ton of jail time. And I hope they get the equal amount. At first, I was like, oh, maybe give Jody more, you know, but nah, both, 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 both. She's worse than the trudge bowl in Matilda. Yeah, I'd rather be in the chokey than deal with the shit that they were dealing with. Mom is uh, eating brownies while they starve, have no water. Yeah, and then she was gloating to them. She was telling them, they're like, oh, I get to sleep on a nice soft bed. You slept on the hard floor. How does that feel? Uh, who does that? Okay, but anyway, so that's it for today. Um, today was sort of a long stream. I don't know what we're going to do next week. I think there's like a lot of stuff that's coming out. I have jury duty, by the way. Well, I don't have jury duty. It's not solidified, but they summoned me for jury duty. And um, they said that I can bring my seat cushion because I can't sit for a very long time. My butt starts hurting and all that stuff. But uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, we have, have you guys heard about the Rebecca Grossman case? I haven't done a video about it yet, but I did make a short on YouTube and I posted it on my TikTok as well. I've been making videos on the TikTok now because I don't know. It's, uh, I like doing like the story time stuff but it's like in a short format. I do want to do a long format for Rebecca Grossman. I feel like there's a lot to cover, but it's about this socialite in LA. She's in her 60s now, and she was racing her boyfriend, okay? They came from a restaurant. They were both drinking and driving. And, oh, I think, I don't know if he was confirmed drinking and driving. I think so, because it was mentioned that he was having drinks at the restaurant. But anyways, she was racing her boyfriend and she was going down the road at like 80 miles per hour. She ran over two children in front of their mother. And she is, till this day, so denying that it's her. She said that it was a different car that did it. It was her boyfriend's car that did it. But the mom testified saying, I saw it was her car. Her car was the one that passed by. And there was another eyewitness that said that as well. Anyways, that, that case has been crazy. She has a hearing today because apparently after her trial was over, she's been trying to reach out to the jury. She's been trying to reach out to the victim's family. I don't know. The whole case is just so horrible to think about. Um, so horrible. But uh, she has a hearing today, and I guess I'll take a look at what's going on there. I know Karen Reed has a trial coming up, and then Chad Daybell so has his trial coming up in like a week or two. Um, and then April, lots of things happening, lots of things happening in April. We got some sentencing. Um, Hannah Reed was supposed to have her sentencing in April, but that might be pushed back. I think her lawyer is trying to file for a new trial because he claims that the, that the, that the judge's instructions to the jury was too 
confusing but i'm like sir you were there you could have clarified or told the judge about this i don't know did he not um sarah boone has a status hearing as well and then yeah there's just a lot of stuff going on in may too as well so we're pretty uh, we're pretty jam-packed <laughs> Cork is gonna live stream her jury duty from the jury box i hope it's gonna be a short one because i have vacation um i have like vacation planned afterwards so i hope that i don't know i hope it's not gonna be a long one but yeah, I got a uh, a jury summon. Are you not allowed to talk about it? I'm not doing jury duty yet. Uh, once it happens, you can't talk about it. But I got a jury summon. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You made the mistake of looking at the footage of the poor boy. I haven't seen the footage yet. I've seen uh, screenshots and pictures from news articles that I was looking up later. Yes, I'll bring some eggs. <laughs> i'll bring some eggs all right y'all i hope you guys have a good one uh take care um thanks for chatting i know today was a pretty tough day i hope you guys have a good weekend hope you guys take care of yourselves your family members your beautiful pets your children uh feel free to join the discord if you'd like we have a true crime section feel free to post anything regarding this case or other cases in there and uh yeah i don't know check out the um wait if you guys are on TikTok, follow me on there. Find corgi -san. I have like other stories that I posted on there or like longer formats because TikTok allows you to do three minutes. YouTube shorts are only one minute long, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, check me out on TikTok and all that stuff. And I don't even have a command for that. Oh God, I'm so lame. But my online moniker is all the same everywhere. It's corgi -san with two A's. <laughs> all right, y'all have a good one. Yeah, I hope you guys take care and um, I'll see you guys a different day. I'll have this stream chopped up um, and we'll post it on the YouTube channel. If you guys miss any parts of this and there's only certain ones that you want to watch, I'll have it chopped up. But if you guys want to watch the whole thing, this whole stream will be available. And I don't know, it's a pretty long day, right? I don't know how long did I stream for, actually. We streamed for... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I had my Twitch chat covered up. Ah! Moondog, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I... Moondog, hello. Rico, hello. Barnes, hello. <laughs> spring i'm so sorry i forgot that my twitch chat was covered up oh my bad guys you guys are the best but um i hope you guys have a good one i stream on twitch as well uh we do true crime on youtube and on twitch on twitch i only play video games on there if you're into video games feel free to stop by <laughs> but i hope you guys have a good one. Oh my god i feel so dumb now oh all right guys take care